Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the World Esports Championship 2023 Africa Regional Qualifiers. Yesterday we finished the Dota 2 uh, with the South Africa region. Today we are going to move to the PUBG Mobile. Uh, in the Dota 2 we see five teams uh, competing at each other. Uh, Egypt, Morocco, Algeria, Namibia and uh, South Africa. In the PUBG game we will have uh, uh, 12 teams together uh, competing and uh, building for the final spot in the, the main tournament. These teams are Djibouti, Egypt, Ghana, Ivory Coast, Libya, uh, Martius, Morocco, Namibia, Nigeria, Senegal, South Africa and Algeria. We will see uh, six games playing uh, today and also tomorrow we are going to see more of them which will decide which team moves on into the main tournament. And yeah, that's it from my side uh, as I can hear our casters is ready. So guys, it's again up to you. Welcome to the African qualifiers to the IESF. 
I'm Volt. I'll be joined by Sir Cloud. And well, today we're going to have a very interesting set of matchups. We're expecting clear favorites. But well, what's a little bit of PUBG without some drama? So, Cloud, how are you doing today? Are you as excited as I am? Oh, I'm ex absolutely excited because we will be seeing some of the best players around as well. So we'll be exciting to see who will be the top three that will move on to Romania, the ticket to the next stage. Yeah, well, that'll be interesting. And of course, some of these teams have been together for a while. Other bit of them has actually been just a mix and match of the best player in their country. So how do we feel about that dynamic? It's a nationality locked tournament. and well, there is regional player to play for, but do you think that that lack of synergy for some teams might cause upsets, or is it just going to be the better players providing the value, like regardless of their chemistry? Yeah, I think it's um, I think it's still a debate whether uh, that will affect their chemistry, and also there will be a question of like how long did they spend training with each other as well. So if we do uh, see some of the uh, examples from the other regions, some of the teams do well as a full squad, and some of the teams do better as a mixed squad. So I don't really have an answer yet, but I'm sure that if we were to kind of analyze the situation, definitely uh, the chemistry would be uh, one of the key things, especially when it comes to PUBG Mobile. All right, so it looks like we will be taking the first game, ladies and gentlemen, the flight path will be from the left side of Kuwari up onto Severny. It's a slightly left side uh, skewed uh, flight path. So we can expect that some of the teams might clash into each other as they try to find vehicles to get into their regular drop spot. Because some of the teams might prefer to drop on the right side. But uh, based on the flight path, it's not going to be easy to drop straight onto where they want to go on the right. Yeah, and that's going to actually bring a very interesting dynamic is it's going to be a matter of which of these teams value getting their loadout and just deciding to basically abandon map control early on and their rotations. It looks like for now, most of these teams, they are just valuing their safety. It's a lot of early rotations and the way that the map has been carved just by that flight path will actually maybe induce a lot of early fights. So that's something that we might be looking out for because just as you can see, some of the teams are just taking the easier left side with their landing. Some of the teams have already landed, but where the zone is, is actually going to be a very big journey just to travel for these teams. Yeah, and it would be even worse if the circle actually goes down onto military base. Frankly speaking, it's one of my favorite circles. I feel that that kind of circle is really challenging. So it will be interesting to see how these players overcome that kind of challenge. And... As far as we have seen earlier on during the map shown, uh, there are no teams that actually drop into military base, so everyone has to travel in case the circle does go there. That does actually provide some advantage to the teams that have already landed. They can just go for the hard lock vehicles, or the hard spawn, as we call them, and just try to get early control. But there's already an early oh. bit of interaction between the players there, and that is always going to be the cause when you have that kind of small airdrop and people are trying to move and it's going to be a race of the base who's going to make it and who's going to get the votes because both control are going to be massive later on but for now most of the teams are actually pretty safe as we can see some of the teams just like ivory coast here and some of the other teams have just decided to go to the right side in algeria are already making a run for it but there's also ghana as well, there as well they're all going to make a run for it and even nambia is following suit we might see an early fight here yeah, Algeria, I guess they wanted to get that vehicle, but the moment they noticed that, oh, another team's around, okay, they kind of abandoned the plan, and that's kind of okay as well, because you don't want to get caught up when you are actually going for that vehicle. I guess the reason why we see so many movements now is because of how tricky the circle is. It is still a 50-50 circle. Not to say that it will go onto military base island, but it, there's still a possibility that it goes onto the main peninsula. But you as a team, you kind of like have to flip the coin to kind of guess where will the circle be at. Okay, and just look at these teams all the way up north. They're going to have to move very quickly and there will be a lot of blood. Because nobody's even on the military base as of yet. Everybody's just trying to make their way through. And finally, we're going to see some teams try to make the movement. But the South Africans, they're just taking their time. They got in their vehicles, and now they're going to move. So 
that early drop from some of the teams that decided to take the plunge and just take the worst or rather unconventional positioning, whether for the flight or the place that they landed, they might be rewarded. And for now, teams are moving. Algeria are trying to cross and they might be the first team that takes control of it. And depending on the circle and where it goes and how the end game develops, phase four might be one of the most interesting rounds of PUBG that I've seen in a very long time. Absolutely agree. I mean, the there's a possibility that the circle will shift either side. So meaning that teams who choose either side, like the main third base or the main peninsula, if the circle moves away, they will all need to move. And like what you mentioned, in phase four, phase five, the circle would be small. Teams will be close by each other. We may see teams being gate kept from coming into the circle, especially when it comes to the two bridges on the left and the right on main third base. Exactly, and that's something that they have to work for, but for now, a lot of people are just working their way slowly through the map. They've taken control of the vehicles because there is a lot of freedom for the team that went to the right side. These teams have gotten their fair share of loot. They're probably locked and loaded and they have the vehicles. But will that be a problem? Because for now we're seeing Ivory Coast walk in and they might be the first team to contest Algeria. Already a lot of control being shifted away the peninsula and that's something that might be a bit problematic but teams like nigeria here a lot of confidence in their play they know that they are better off taking their time already algeria taking control of the bridge and just taking locks early on first blood will be drawn by the algerian team still locking down the bridge and that what happens when you take that early lead in rotations i would believe that algeria will be one of the favorite teams because they do feature ralph who is currently playing with Nigma Galaxy, a team that has a lot of experience playing in the global stages. And if you have a player like that in your team, that gives you a really good advantage, not only in terms of mechanical skills, but also because of your experience. He knows a lot about the timing, a lot about how to communicate well in game. So we can see because of that as well, they were prepared to wait for teams to come towards them and they got the first blood. Exactly, and that's something that is going to be very interesting now because I'm very close. They are the gatekeepers. You were talking about gatekeepers. They're just holding this position. That compound is going to be super strong for them once they get in. And even for now, you can see teams are trying to pivot back towards the military base. Just cross off the peninsula, get the bridges. But there are two pincers that are coming in, whether it be the Ivorian team or the Algerians on the other side. It's going to be rather difficult for everybody that's walking, that's walking in. And now. South Africa is just looking to refuel, reload, and maybe find an angle because there hasn't been that many teams that use the naval route. Not a lot of votes have been deployed. And as we can see already, some of the teams might start to gatekeep each other, especially the teams that are moving in right there from the hospital area, walking into Pashinki. That will be a crux of the fight. But for now, South Africa is trying to cross, and Algeria is still holding strong right here. You can see the setup. And once people walk in, this might be devastating. Algeria are reaping the early rotations. Yeah, if Algeria or any other team that actually passes by this bridge and they notice the box in the middle of the bridge, that will be a clue for them that's... Uh, to tell them that hey someone could be there waiting so you got to be extra careful so based on the elimination feed as well like what we saw earlier on i believe that also gives a clue to the teams like what kind of happened around of course they don't know exactly where the elimination was made but uh, that could be an indication of like okay let's take our time to scout at the bridge just to be sure that no one's waiting for us or if someone's there we are prepared to take the fight first rather than just trying to go for the drive-by and it will be uh, free eliminations for a team that's waiting there, especially, well, namely Algeria. Algeria and even Ivory Coast are taking good positions. South Africa even have made a good place for themselves. And as you can see right there, teams are just rotating. They're trying to make their move, but it just might not be enough because for now, people are fighting over Milta, but the farm might be another position of the contest we're seeing teams like Morocco and Egypt finally make their move towards the stage, towards the zone, but that's going to be the intriguing part. Right now, everybody's coming in, so wow. it's just going to be a matter of what happens. The next zone will decide everything. We might have a very quick game on our hand, and already the Western Bridge 
is actually having some contests as well. So the fight for the military base will all conclude on the eastern side just for the zone. But the teams on the west might have a very good angle to capitalize on all the hectic action that might happen. Uh, in the many, many games that I've watched, casted, and so on, most of the teams would prefer to go on the left bridge. But this time around, seems like the majority of the teams are on the right bridge. But so happened that the circle went towards that area. So that's okay. But that also means that teams will clash into each other earlier on. Because like what we saw in the circle previously, there is still a good amount of unplayable land. I think maybe about like 20 to 30%. So you have like only 70% of land that you can play. And with the amount of teams that still left, it's still got 11 teams, 42 players. There's a big possibility that we'll see the next elimination real soon. Yeah, exactly. Especially with Senegal trying to break the deadlock on the bridge that Algeria has held. And I love what the Ivorians are doing. They're just letting a lot of space off. Senegal might just try to scout the area off. We can see right now, Yuji just trying to make a move. But the Algerians have taken a deadlock on the bridge and the teams on the west already making their move. You can see that the people are making the move towards the package. And that's going to be a very big load of information and power that they have. Now they have the military base itself. They can have the loot there. They can have the fight. And everybody already on the bridge, we might have a very big hectic fight. Everybody just waiting for that first bullet to whoever is going to break the deadlock. And it just might be the Senegal team because now Morocco are coming in. They will take a fight and they will even take a knock out of Samurai. Marshmallow's in a good position, especially with the shotgun. In the close quarter combat, things are not looking good for the Senegal's team as they will lose Samurai to Marshmallow there with the shotgun. And that might force them to move early on. And this is the very intriguing part is now teams will have to make that decision. Do we actually go for the peninsula and just hope that we can lock it down from all the teams that are rotating or do we go for the bridge it's right now senegal they are pressured to go there and algeria will be there in open arms to rock them off oh yeah algeria is re ready okay wait for it wait for it wait for it and here we go the gunfire is happening now between algeria and senegal now senegal gets stuck in place now circle is still there they still have time to hold on to this area but for how long because they need to be prepared the fact that other teams might come in behind exactly teams are fighting and as you can see the bridge is still held by the ivorians that means it's going to be a very hard time for them they have to walk in but the moroccan team is already closed down senegal they're trying to escape but it's looking like it is a deadlock for them right now they can't go either way they're just waiting for their inevitable doom and right now the Egyptians as well are facing the knocks on the scoreboard and as you can see Algeria they're starting to walk back taking some of that control of the island just willing to leave the bridge off and right now things are not looking good as the Egyptian team are facing the second knock and Morocco are winning oh and the zone has arrived onto some of these teams we can see Ivory Coast they lose one player Singo tries to get out of the blue but right now there's another team actually waiting for them. Ivory Coast, they're in a dire position at this moment. And plus, the circle did move down onto military base island. Algeria currently has the best position possible to farm eliminations to be the one to gatekeep other teams from coming into the island. And when we were shown the map earlier on, it seems that majority of the teams are still on the main peninsula. They're still there. And that is the interesting trifecta that we're seeing right here. Nigeria just trying to make their angles. And then Morocco holding there. And it's going to be another one for the same game. Just farming people with that rifle from the rooftops. And even if you look behind them, just to the island, you'll see the Ivorians are still holding despite facing a few knocks. Algeria, they've moved in. And there might be a big fight right there by the military base. Three teams are taking the fight. But I believe that Algeria have actually lost the high ground. Now the high ground is not theirs. And with four teams already on the military base already on the island the more teams to come in doesn't look very good it looks like egypt will be out of it and now morocco they are facing a very difficult decision what will their decision be because for now everybody's still fighting in the blue they're still trying to find an angle but Maradis, they're not winning a moroccan team have been racking points but now they have to make the option to cross and the timing of the cross will be everything especially for the other fire here nigeria might walk into the rest of Maradis. 
Oh, interestingly, that Nigeria is still interested to take this fight. All right, despite the zone not on their side, and we're moving to a stage four. The zone will be painful. Roach is still here. He has about 40% health. He has a couple of first aids. That's fine. But how long can he stay there? Now, Senegal may want to force their way through because time is not on their side. Exactly, and I think Algeria has already abandoned the bridge, but might have been a little bit too late here for Senegal, who are now finally walking in for the zone. They might have even tried to gatecap the blue zone here. As we can see, Doctor might be holding the Moroccan team, who is on the bridge, trying to gatekeep. So it's layers upon layers, and since nobody plays Naples, nobody decided to play, things are not looking good. Snuffy's just trying to find a spray. It looks like the rest of Maroidus and Nigeria are in a very rough position. They have to walk through the island. But just as you can see, it's layer upon layer. And Morocco, they might just feast here or it might be Senegal to catch them lacking. Everybody's walking in. We're going to start into her. Morocco is trying to find some shots. But things Ooh. are not working for anybody now. That will be a three-team fight right here. Well, the zone will be enough to knock down Sky, but now we move over to Paradox. Paradox is taking the blue as well. He doesn't have any first aids. Paradox, if he don't get the elimination, he will be out without points for himself, but he managed to still get two elimination points, three for his team so far. And now the circle moves towards the high ground that you pointed out that the, that was key in the previous circle. Exactly. Algeria, the team who has actually held the closest to that high ground, have lost it early on. And now Testing that spot already. The high ground is having a little bit of an advantage, but will Namibia actually take advantage of it? Because for now, they're not winning the trades as much as we expected them to, maybe. And they actually try to do something interesting. The last member of Egypt here trying to find elimination, still in the blue. And just as he said, the zone is absolutely hurtful. And you can see they're trying to find the limb points, but nothing is happening over there here. And now Djibouti. Still trying to hold the high ground and the, the cell tower will be the focus of everyone. And you can see Algeria, they're already trying to rotate. They might find an angle on Djibouti here if they find the time. Oh, we can see uh, Djibouti now. They do have a little bit of elevation. Not the highest of high ground, but that's still okay. They can still hold on to this area while scouting for the movement of the teams. Algeria making their move as well. Rao sent out to do a little bit of a scouting work. Doctors waiting on the other side. But because they're in the circle, I believe this area should be okay for them to hold on for now as this high ground still allows them to gather information of other teams. Exactly, the late flank coming in. They're still trying to find that position, but well, Djibouti, they might actually have had their win and now Algeria are going to move out of Raouf's scouting and they might walk into the high ground because as you can see, the fight for the hills will continue and the team that is logged on the lower end has been Morocco waiting for a fight, waiting for a timing. But for now, I just see the side of Ghana locking them out and doesn't look very good for anybody. I say that Djibouti is probably the biggest winner here, but it might be a matter of timing because everybody's scouting. And just with 17 left, that high ground fight will come very soon. It's only 50 seconds and people are trying to scout. They have discovered some of the strays at least you can see here in Diaz trying to hide by the tree, but looks like Djibouti, they might have won. They're even making their move now. And well, things are looking good for them, but I think that Namibia holding the highest of high ground are probably the big winner, but will they be able to capitalize? That's the big question. It's only 30 seconds left here. Well, I hope they have one case. Oh, uh, we can see that Diaz, he is caught out behind the tree. Well, he still has a circle, so he can still hold on to that. Seems like Isco can't find a good angle against him. Solitude and Ko, on the other hand, still at the peak of this mountain. They will be unchallenged with this sort of terrain. And not only unchallenged, they can gather information about the movement of the other teams and they can pre-plan their move in case the next piece of the circle moves away from them. But since they're right smack in the middle of the circle, it's very likely they'll still get it. Exactly, they might be in the crossfires of all the flights. But the problem is just as he said, for everybody else, they don't have the level of information that Namibia has. Ghana's trying to make a move. Morocco's still on the lower ground and they might take a fight, but just look how disadvantageous it is for Ghana. Just looking up that high, the angle is super hard. Teams are still trying to find an angle and Algeria 
are still trying to regain the control that they've had off the bridge. But for now, it's Namibia and Djibouti that have made the crux of the advantage of Algeria trying to find their way through. They might discover a, a few of the Ghanaian players. But just look at the angle there. It's not looking good. And from here, I believe that Djibouti might have the flank if they gather their time. And Stage 5 is coming in. Intrigued to see how the circle will shape the team because it's seven teams. They've been at a stalemate here. And Cloud, I think this stalemate will be no longer with the next ring. Yeah, I think Stage 6 definitely will force some teams to move and we'll see more fights happening. As we can see here, Algeria, they actually have a pretty decent angle. And this kind of angle is like, yes, you can still pin knocked, it's possible, but you have enough of the terrain to cover you, to reset yourselves. Now we can see as well that the other teams are starting to get closer and closer with each, with each other. And another elimination, Marshmallow is going to get it. Doctor is going to get eliminated by Senke as well. So there's going to be a couple of uh, points for Morocco. Exactly, Morocco. Has been doing great work just staying in the shadows and then reaping the limelight when a time is opportune for them and look at algeria look at look at how problematic that place is for them namibia can absolutely just hail them down with nades but they might be running out and Djibouti, they're running out of time because as you said morocco has been doing great they've been wiping squad after squad the rotations are super clear and well, that's the advantage that you get from being a four-man team. I think that's Natalie that trying to fight a fight. Ooh. But Marshmallow will finalize that one. And that means that Morocco are reaping some good end points. You can see eight eliminations for the North Africans. But will they be able to wrap it up? The top five placement will be great for them. But they need to find it. The high ground is imminent. Everybody has to walk in into that high ground in Morocco might have to face algeria algeria right now pincer between the two teams trying to find an exit but it does look unlikely oh wow morocco is still a solid team eight eliminations and with six teams left they'll start to collect placement points as well now speaking about the circle looking at the current condition seems like uh, Djibouti still has that middle part of the circle and it's very likely for them to get the next phase so they'll still be king of the hill and it's very unlikely for teams to really for teams to really be able to challenge them as much as like algeria wants to go up but there's no space for them to really go all the way up yes five seconds and from there we will know what the case will be stage six might actually benefit the team that has taken the high ground it looks like it will be the case high ground is still to be safe and now algeria has to make a very difficult decision you can see morocco there as well playing on the outskirts and teams might collide with each other the playable space is shrinking but elevation has been the name of the game so far and south africa they've been absolutely quiet playing for the placement points but without any eliminations from the south africans for now things are going to be hard as we can see morocco they're scaling in they have the nays in hand they're playing their utility right but will they be able to clear the high ground it's a very difficult question it looks like nobody else is willing to take that contestion so will namibia be able to win they're trying to hold for their best trying to hold for dear life morocco they are trying to close in but they will take another fight now waiting for the nays trying to play for the upper ground second floor the name of the game but will morocco be able to break it looks like shots are trading back and forth but no not so far oh right now nambia we need to redefend this i mean one knock will open up the floodgate for morocco to come in the same time madara's knocked down and we can see feed me is waiting behind but feed me spotted out by his opponent Kilwa will take him down and ghana looks like they will lose one player Go, they're still waiting for the right timing, waiting for them to show themselves. And Go will start to shoot. Go with the DBS will not lose that fight, but someone shot me from behind. Itachi will be the last man standing for Namia. Yeah, and no limbs as well. Things are looking very hard, and they're just gonna jump straight to their death. Dripping down through the bullets of Morocco. Morocco with 12 eliminations. That is a colossal number. They've already made their statement right here. They're here to play, they're here to win 12 elims in the top four, especially with how weak and that knock. A nice shot by Lazy Boy. Making Djibouti's situation harder, but will they spot Algeria? They're playing much lower than they should. Cars are there, South Africa as well. Algeria are stuck between a rock and a hard place. 
but at least they're not in the same spot as South Africa, who have to make the final move. It's only two knocks for Djibouti. And Morocco, kings of the hill, king of the game, and definitely kings of her angle. Will they be able to wrap it up, or will we have an upset here? It doesn't look to be the case, because Isco has taken the brunt of the damage, and I think this should be over. Look at Morocco, that's the 13th on the board. Oh, and Lazy Boy spotted a tornado. And Moma will be taken out. Now he's down to rob the last man standing for Algeria. He'll need to fend them off, but the DBS is coming. Lazy Boy is getting closer and closer. He probably spot where Ralph is at. And Ralph now at the lower ground. Lazy Boy shoots. Lazy Boy misses. Lazy Boy tries to connect the shots, but it's not going to be that easy. He jumps down. He wins the fight against Ralph. And Algeria is out at number four. Here is out top three. With 16 for Morocco, the cryptic team. With Carry Boy has been doing insane work. Now just looking at everybody else, there's only two limbs for Djibouti, and I believe nothing at all for South Africa. So they've taken their time. And they've tried their very best. It's only Isco trying to stay alive, trying to buy for some time. But you can see Marshmallow is scouting and time is running out. It's only 40 seconds before the members of the Djibouti team will be spotted. Things are not looking good. Lazy Boy with five limbs. Out of that 16, great input. And well, if the Moroccan team has an input in the position of South Africa, I think this should be over. They have a great lead. Stage 6 is running out. People will have to walk in. But now Isco's out and death should be another 116. And that one will be for South Africa. They're trying to get the scraps. It's down to a 1v1. But the positional advantage is definitely with the Moroccans. Will be they able to wrap it up? It's only Potato Sully. Weaver to try to find an angle in Morocco are just gonna rain hellfire. Mm. Potato will be brought out. It's only down to the last two. This should be 17 for Morocco. Will they be able to wrap it up? Or will South Africa put out the upset? Oh, I mean it's a it's a literally a tall order now for South Africa to beat Morocco. Right now, South Africa only has two players left. They go down to the ground floor. Will they deny themselves? This will be the question because there's only two teams left, but Morocco will not give them the opportunity. Lazy Boy will be at the forefront with the DBS. And we know how good a DBS at this race will be. He comes, he shoots, he conquers them all, but no, Lazy Boy countered for the Lazy Boy will be knocked down. Lazy Boy eliminated at least one extra point there for South Africa. Unless South Africa can pull off a clutch, Carry Boy is here. Carry shoots and Carry will end the game. First winner, winner, chicken dinner goes to Morocco. Morocco with an insane game. Start to finish. It's a mixture of everything patience, the coordination to get it executed, clearing up the high ground. And it's, it all started here. You can see Algeria taking the bridge, taking the early lens. Everybody thought, at least you, at least I thought, I don't know about you, I thought that this was Algeria's game to lose. They got in the ground, they got in the favorable zone, but then they just squandered it off. It feels like Morocco got the space Algeria played rather passive and didn't take the high ground in time, allowing other teams to reap control. And just as you can see there in the replays, fights started to dwindle. A lot of the fights in the peninsula, because people were desperate. A lot of the teams knew that they couldn't make it to the island. They tried to fight for limp points. And that's where Morocco came in. You can see them just pouncing in the nick of time, getting some limbs, and then this clear here on Amibia. That was picture perfect. Everything from the push, the trades, and even the angling that the Moroccans had. They pulled a great game. But will they be able to do it on the other maps is the question. Because for now, Enrangle seems to be their household. And not gonna lie, it was a tough circle. Considering that it's the first game, I mean, there's like a baptism of fire for all these teams. But Morocco, man, they are showing their firepower, their rotations on point, their fight taking is great, how they flush out teams out of the compound. Everything is just on point for Morocco. I mean, looking at how they're performing in the first half, it feels that Morocco is going to be the big team to beat. Definitely. I don't know if that's 19 or 20 eliminations. But either way, just think of it this way. The number of eliminations is too severe. This is a disaster striking now for the team. Will they be able to recoup? Because the other teams are going to be in a very rough spot. First place, 20 or 19 limbs. Like, this should definitely guarantee them at least a top five from here. They still have more maps to go. It's, it's split up in two days. But day one, Morocco are coming in hot. They're coming in sharp. And some of the other teams have been quiet. Egypt has had a very quiet game. 
despite being one of the more favorable teams or regions as a whole in the African like region or in the African stratosphere. They've been pretty quiet. South Africa tried their best, but they couldn't wrap it up. And Morocco had it all. They had the limbs, they had placement, they had the movement. And now with the map changing, maybe we'll see a differential, but Morocco are looking to be hot. And I think that momentum will continue. Yeah, but we'll see whether Morocco's momentum will continue or another team will rise in the next round. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be taking a short break before we go on to game number two. So do not go anywhere. See you guys after this.
we are back. The game is about to get started yet again. And well, Andrew, I don't know about you, but that was a great matchup. I'm excited to see the scoreline because I think Morocco slaughtered everybody. And given the way that the map has gone, I'm actually not expecting that big of a difference between what happened here in Rango, what's going to happen on Miramar, which I assume will be the second map of the day. Big sidelines, big angles, and that is what the team utilized on this unique circle that we had today. Yeah, I think um, some of the fans would be uh, expecting Morocco to perform because they are technically a full uh, Cryptics lineup and Cryptics has the uh, experience of playing in the global stage. So for that kind of performance as a start, it was amazing for them. But nevertheless, we are looking for the top three that will go on to the next stage. So whatever it is, it is still uh, three slots in total available for these teams to actually catch up onto. Definitely. Well, from looking at what the game has unraveled, I'm expecting Algeria to make a recovery. Like, you've seen it, I don't know about you, but I think that their map movement is excellent, at least on Unrangle. Expect the same on Miramar. Of course, the hard spawn vehicles will be the big contestant point. We've seen teams play it safe just because of the way that the circle has been. I'm expecting the same. Nobody likes to fight early or lose early members, but maybe somebody will pull that gambit because of. But it's, it feels like, okay, Morocco are running in with a lead. You can see 34 points. Ooh, like just... I mean, <laughs> look at the lead. That's like more than double the second place, South Africa, 34 points. And other than that, Algeria, that made a good rotation, like what you mentioned, managed to get 12 points in this round. But for uh, the other teams that we can see here, Nigeria still has one point. Uh, at least uh, most of these teams, they go out of the round with something. Everybody made something out of this one, but it felt like it should have been more for South Africa. They just had a very quiet game as a whole. They're like that kid that walks up from the back of the classroom and knows the answer. They're second place. <laughs> they, they've they made very little initiative in the map as a whole, yet they still managed to find second place, so you got to give them credit for that much. But I don't think that will cut it on, the, on Miramar here. It's a lot of sidelines. It's a lot of gunfights that you will have to take earlier than in Wrangle that has a lot of these cover. Especially just the color palette. Everybody's so clear to spot. Snipers are going to be powerful. We've seen people just spraying people down through the other end. And elevation play will play a big factor here. Yeah, totally agree. I mean, knowing the terrain, like the back of your hand, is going to be important inside of Mirama because there's very little vegetation inside of it. Uh, if not then you got to be masters of uh, certain compounds because there's still going to be a possibility of a compound fight as well. But majority of the map depends on the knowledge of high grounds for, for that kind of map. So Mirama will be really interesting and I'm sure it will bring a different dynamic. And this will be a challenge for a team like Morocco who started off really well. Can they continue on their momentum from the Irango match? Seen there, on the score, Things are looking okay for the teams in the bottom. Nobody's too far off. Every team has gotten some points. Even the teams that went out rather quietly at least have three or four points in their, in their inventory. So it shouldn't look so bad for the teams. Of course, we'll be waiting to see the teams to get in and get ready for the matchup. But for now, I'm actually just intrigued to see like which of these teams that ended up in the middle of the pack do you expect to try to make a leap out of the top four, the top three to, to find the qualifier? Because we've seen Ivory Coast holding a good position. They couldn't make the best out of it. Egypt has seen that they've been caught up by rotation. It was just the fact that the zone was unfavorable to them and then they couldn't recoup from there. So do you have somebody in mind that can make a comeback or a Miramar and get a better placement? Well, I kind of like Djibouti's uh, rotation and how they picked the spot as well. It, and from what we saw in the previous round, they went straight for the high ground, meaning that they're pretty confident of uh, playing with high grounds. And that kind of confidence inside of Murama would be great because like what we talked about, Murama has a lot of high grounds. So Djibouti might be the one that comes up as a surprise, I think. Yeah, well, we'll be waiting for that right now. We're still waiting for the players to load in. But... Just from the way that the map is played and the game as a whole is juggled, I'm expecting a much quicker pace of Miramar, waiting for the players and just everything that's going to happen. I think it could be different because we've seen a very slow and stable game. 
And it looks like some teams are just not able to cope with the experience that you've talked about, whether it's Cryptics or even like some of the other teams, like Azuria have experienced players, Egypt has experienced players, even some of the other regions have players that have played in the African circuit, have played in a wild card, have played in these situations where sometimes it's do or die. Sometimes you're just trying to vow it out there. And these teams are hungry for something. They haven't had that much of an international representation. And this might be their chance. Yeah, so I think because at the end of the day, right, it doesn't matter whether you're number one or you're number three, as long as you are in the top three to qualify on to the, the next stage. So uh, don't be too disheartened. You know, I know the teams don't start off well because we still got a lot more games to go. And today is only day number one. We were just done with only one game and we have tons of games to go. In fact, we have 11 more games to go. So there's a lot of opportunity for these teams to really catch up to each other. But that also means that Morocco cannot be complacent with their performance in game number one. You never know sometimes that other teams could just uh, surprise them and catch them off guard. And this is PUBG Mobile that we're talking about. The playground is um, 360. But you know what? Looks like we're going to go in for another break while we wait for our players to be ready. So do not go anywhere. We'll see you guys after this break.
from a place of hardship to a place of ease cause a place of flourish in return it's for a reason that I can say it yeah. Well, welcome back, everyone. We're back. Finally, the players are loading in. So me and Cloud over here are going to lead you through Miramar. And, well, we've seen a very unorthodox flight path for map one. Do you expect something that is more traditional for map two, given the odds, given the way that Miramar is constructed? Or shall we be expecting some more of these, like, weird gimmicks that we're seeing here? Well, as an audience... Definitely, I'd like to hear to see those uh, weird gimmicks. They'll be really fun to watch. Not only the flight path, not only a weird flight path, but also like a weird circle as well. Maybe tuck it somewhere in the corner. That'll be pretty nice. That would also uh, jump up the space, the the pace for our players when the game goes, and we'll see more action as uh, as the game goes if they kind of circle. So I look forward to seeing those kind of tricky flight path, tricky uh, circles as well. But speaking about the flight path, we'll be jumping to our game, and the flight path will be shown to us. I believe there's going to be a nicely cut flight path in the middle. No, not really. It's on the side as well. Yeah, but at least that one is giving a lot of people much more freedom and with the loot distribution, things shouldn't be that hard. I'm not expecting a big fight early on between anybody. And some of the teams are taking these early positions. But given the way that everybody is going to go, I'm not expecting anything for the early circles. But again, seeing how most of the teams are actually trying to go west side and not towards the east, not towards areas like Impala or Puerto Paracio we might be having a very standard game depending on the zone but of course the zone can change and screw everyone up but for now nobody's heading for the island 
again, the, that's another theme of the map. Everybody's just sticking to the main region, the main peninsula, trying to play for there. And well, there's a lot to play for in Miramar. High ground is an immense advantage in here. Yeah, the knowledge of high ground is definitely going to be really valuable, uh, what we discussed before the break. So uh, it will definitely be a challenge. And plus, it is the first Mirama round that we're going to see inside of this tournament. And it's going to be an introductory round for them as well to get to know each other on who likes to play on high ground, who likes to play on the low ground, and so on and so forth. But the circle looks like it's going to be a little bit on the southern side, just below Lost Learners. Mm, there is still the possibility that it will go to one of those heavy high grounds on the south of Lost Learners or even on the south of Jumacera. So this will be a very interesting one. If it goes there, it'll be great. But it, there is also a possibility that it will go like onto the flatter lands on the lower grounds just left of Jumacera. Yeah, but for now, that is something that teams have to consider. But there is a lot of freedom. It's almost as if the entirety of Northwest is fully clear and just looking at things in here south africa and egypt they might try to just pick off again for free but that is not the case again manages to ditch and that could have been a very early freebie for south africa but that will not be the case everybody just playing for their safety and it's hard to know how people are doing but now south africa again oh they are trying to find an angle in egypt this time We'll be the ones to capitalize. We need to see better trading though, because now South Africa are moving in. Egypt are trying to take the fight to the indoors. But I'm ex still expecting them not to communicate too much because they shut down. Whoever has managed to find the trades, these nades are going to be important, but they need to find the trades. Because South Africa, they've had their down member back up. Lap has managed to find something. Sully and Griff are both stuck in there, and Potatoes trying to be that sideline that just buys enough distraction. And it's an early gambit from Egypt. They're trying to take the fight early, but they're still not giving it their all, knowing that there might be a third party, there might be a different sideline that they're not prepared for. But for now, it's going to be River out of the equation. And, and, you know, we were talking about South Africa, how they were very quiet early on. Now they're forced to make something out of it because with three members, things will be hard to find trades in the later circles. Unfortunately, it's not the start that they would have wanted. So they'll be playing the rest of the round with three players. And this area is about 1,800 meters away from the circle. And they're up against the Egyptian team. Now, the Egyptian team, I don't think they're interested to go in for the chase. They'll let them go for now because right now they seem to be focusing on to looting. And that's absolutely fine because they're still very early into the game. If you get that one elimination at this stage, that's an absolute bonus but look at the spread of the players so we have a little bit of a void in between like the top side and the bottom side so there's a lot of space for players to still rotate and travel but we have a good number of teams as well on the areas of el azahar so i i think we can expect to see more clashes around that area but because we're still in the first phase of the circle and looking at the timing of how some of the teams are traveling, I guess we'll need to wait until maybe the fourth phase till we see the uh, regular uh, fights everywhere in the map. Definitely, and now we're seeing some members trying to make a move. South Africa, they are forced to just concede the area to Egypt and try to find another avenue, which is what they are trying to achieve here. They are getting some of the vehicles. But will they get the proper positioning? Because as he said, there is space to try to gate to gatekeep people in South Africa are already moving in towards the center of the map. Maybe they will find something there. And as he said, the southern part of El Azar is actually a very strong power point for the teams to try to pressure. Getting early high ground in that area will make rotations much more difficult for everybody. But for now, we're still seeing some of the teams on the southern end just trying to play their game and with three minutes that's a lot of time to try to avoid anything and speaking of trying to avoid well egypt they are not going to be avoiding these trades as they'll have will be knocked and fully taken care of and that's already the favor that they've paid the south africa paid right back to them yeah a little bit of a trade there, and that happened on the northern side where the circle is not in there so the blue will be on top of them if they don't rotate anytime soon but anyway we're still at stage one of the circle so meaning that the blue is still tankable it's still doable 
but you need to be prepared with the healing items, healing utilities, as they need to take out the circle to get into, take out the blue to get into the circle. Now we can see movement here from Mauritius. Mauritius, they drop all the way up north. They tuck themselves at the corner, a very safe drop spot, but that also means that the travel into the circle will be the furthest. Exactly, they'll have to take the longest journey around. And they don't even have the luxury of maybe traveling a little bit early, trying to get some access from the west, which is a choice that they could have made. But now they're not doing this. And you can see on the left side of the screen, Nigeria are trying to play for some of these power positions for the late travelers. And that might be a problem. Same with Ghana here, who are holding that spot. So it's a lot of gatekeeping for the teams, knowing that there is a gap between the teams in the north and the teams in the south, and that nobody's on the west side meaning that that 50% of the map on the eastern end is going to be a bit problematic for them. But we're seeing here Mauroides are finally getting their travels. But will they be able to get out of it unscathed? Taking a lot of these off-road angles, they might walk into South Africa. And I think Potato definitely has heard it. Potato was out in the open. That means that they had to give that one away. At least information has been rallied. To the rest of South Africa who are trying to avoid the ring. It's a medic coming in and more right is a very long path to travel and they are walking through the entirety of South Africa and well Vortex might be in a bit of trouble there and I think that they have realized that they're not in a good position and now they're trying to take some time to maybe find the resources to heal up and wait for South Africa to just leave them alone and try to go for the early position instead of getting the early elimination. Yeah, Vortex will be praying that he finds first aids in this compound because he doesn't have any. He only has one med kit. Uh, so far in this house, no first aids, and he's still taking out the blue. Now, 900 meters away from the circle is not that bad, but the fact that he does not have a single first aid is a little bit worrying. As for uh, Skydu, seems to be in a similar position as well. He only has one first aid. That's not going to be enough because they need to be prepared. The fact that if they, when they get into the circle, there will be other teams waiting for them that they need to fight. So without the amount of health that they would have wanted, then fighting would definitely be a difficult position for them. For sure, it's going to be a question of whether or not they can take the fight from Nambia. They've tried to take a stop, but they got stalled and now Moroid is a team that were supposed to be the late one. They actually found a good bit of chip damage. Will they be able to take down a Tachi or go? That will not be the case. So at least they are alive. They've gotten one of the players off. And as you can see, the North is still trying to catch up to the rest of the pack. But South Africa is in a good position. Considering the place that the ring is, everybody's moving in right there. You can see Algeria already super early on in that position. And so are Morocco, the two teams that we're talking about, the rotations. Morocco on a very big lead. And they're going to be the people that everybody wants to get out of the map early on. Nigeria as well racing for that great higher point to try to get the high ground get the focal attention of everybody but also having the power of cover and these two teams have similar ideas they're on opposite sides of the hill and well snuffy if they walk too far forward to scout things might be problematic but that is not the case just yet and yeah, it looks like a lot of teams prioritizing the high ground just below Shumacera because that will be the uh, focal point of the circle currently. But we do see that a couple of uh, players got eliminated. So I guess they spent too much time on the outside of the circle and they got caught up by other teams in the same direction. And that's where all of that just happened. Right now, there are a good amount of teams as well in the circle, including Algeria, that you mentioned they have a good sense of rotation. And right now, they are in the circle. But on the outside of the circle, we got Djibouti here trying to take out members of Ivory Coast. Yeah, I think Ivory Coast almost all went out. That was three members of the team. Two of them dead, one of them locked. And I think on the left side, this should be it. Senegal still trying to find another angle here. On their fight, they are not in a good position. Algeria is on their toes. Sure, they are on a little bit of a lower ground situation, but the two teams are aware of each other's presence. And another one of the quieter teams, Egypt, has been down the half for a while. Same as North South Africa on three teams. But will the North Africans be able to recover? As you can see, it's only a single first aid as well, even all out. 
of regions. So Egypt are taking a very long road around, confident in their mechanical ability to find a trade in an angle. But it's not looking good in Morocco with the high ground again, trying to feast upon the Algerians, if that will not be the case. It's not looking good for red zone. He got taken out by the blue. Morocco, I think they're in a decent position. Just look at the, around, the, the areas around them. It's like, it's hard for teams to be able to challenge them. Like, even if they got shot, like from below, they can just immediately retreat back and they'll have enough cover to reset themselves. So, right now in this current position with this current circle, I think Morocco arguably has one of the best positions. I think Morocco does have the best position in the map. But it's just going to be a matter of them not tunneling in on Algeria too much that they are going to let themselves go to the wayside of other teams. And now Egypt, they're trying to make their move on the last Ivorian alive. That would be Joker. But will Joker actually be able to survive the onslaught? Some upgrades for Egypt, but they're desperate for help. Look at the health bars. Situation is not good for the Egyptian team, at least on that aspect. But will they be able to get themselves back in sword, back in shape, and back on the road before anything happens? You can see Joker is just taking all the time they need. They might have actually just lost the entire Egyptian team here. Oh, yes. Because Egypt, they're like, okay, we're still on the outside of the circle. Let's focus on to getting into it. Let's prioritize that rather than taking fights at this stage. Because we're talking about stage 3 to stage 4 circle, meaning that the damage will be quite significant. So that's why they are a little bit more worried on it. And on top of that as well, looking at the inventory of the Egyptian players, they don't have much healing items. So that's why they cannot afford to tank out the blue anymore. And as you can see, Morocco still finding a ton of advantages, even getting the drop package. That's going to be a big lead towards them in terms of firepower, but it's going to be a question of will they be able to capitalize. We're seeing more and more of the circle just moving towards the southwest not towards the island but towards the main area of the map and now the rest of the teams are flocking there but you can see that some teams are playing gatekeep south africa again just playing their slow style there potato and sully didn't the mauritanians walk through well donna Ooh. might have been ha having a very big problem here because spam is gonna go down that's an important name for Egypt, but the rest of the team now knows where the Egyptians are. It's sure it's going to be untraded. And Egypt are starting to take some damage from Nigeria as well. Not the, not the best position for Egypt. Not a lot of healing as well. So they need to ditch their way out of there. They need to find an angle where they can take duels. Because Morocco, look at them. They're taking three duels there. Three damage into Mauritania, who will just walk out and leave nothing happen. Snuffy will be taken out on the other end. Nigeria are all in for this fight. Oh, Nigeria, they need to reset quickly because other teams could come into their position. Right now, Skinny is providing cover. He tosses out the smoke. They'll be A-OK -okay for now, but we can see as well a rotation happening on the southern side. Two teams actually rotating there. They're playing by the edge of the circle. Skinny might want to take advantage of this. Okay, he goes onto the edge. He scopes out. He sees them. He'll pull the trigger and his shots do connect. Onto Nell, and now Nell down to 30% health. And with that, he may lose the fight. Yeah, but still, some players on opposite sides in Algeria are trying to capitalize on all the AMR that's been happening. That is not the case. Nigeria are not winning those as well. And considering that the team like Senegal can actually just walk back in and get a kill back in the trade. Things are not looking good for anybody. That's a fight that nobody's winning. Well, as you can see, Senegal is trying to escape. But some damage has been reciprocated from Nigeria. Algeria trying to hold an angle. We've seen them play by the bridge. We've spoken about Raouf and the Nigma player just having a lot of power in their shot calling. But we need to see them carrying some of these frags. Because as you can see, they are still locked. And they, they can go through the low ground. They can go back to the high ground because the teams that are there. And they can play by their bridge. And Nigeria are in a very rough place. And so are Algeria here. Oh, Nigeria. But Nigeria, we can't think about it. They can actually get that one elimination point. Just waiting for that one player to get onto shore. But now, looks like we have a fight here between the two teams. We got Djibouti here going up against Egypt. And Egypt wants to get that elimination point again. All the southern ladies spots out. Kill one on the other side. Kill one. Knockdown. Beautiful. 
Pass coming in from him. Will be Morty and another spray onto M. And M will be taken down. Nicely done by again. Five elimination points now for Egypt. Yeah, very big win for them, especially being only three people managed to isolate their sight lines, not allow any trade avenues, not allowing any of these missions, and that's important for Egypt. They've gotten their five of them points. Now their job is halfway done. All they need to do is just make it to top five and maybe Ooh. have a chance here. Because as you can see, South Africa looks like they're all but out of this. Senegal has a very good read of where Sully is. Sully is just trying to play for one final of them, but it doesn't look good in Morocco now are trying to take that angle. I love the way that they're playing it, but the problem is Lazy Boy might be caught off for being a little bit too early, trying to play for the nade. That might be good damage, and that will not be the case, but Griff will still go down either way. And that's Carry Boy out of the equation. Morocco are on the losing end of this. They need to slow things down because as you can see, Egypt, they're trying to move over from the other end. So that other duo is only down to 1v1. Morocco can take their time and just disengage and try again later. Oh, and again, he's keeping an eye on to them. So he'll be happy to steal away liberation points. Now, Carry Boy, unfortunately, he's down. Boom Boom Sir moves in. He's trying to find the next target. He's circling around, still trying to get the information. At the same time, Marshmallow knocked down. Carry Boy knocked down as well. Something's happening to Morocco. Yeah, Morocco are trying to find their angles, but Lazy Boy will find two. Egypt still finding success, and I think Morocco might have actually salvaged that situation, but no. Partania are still doing great. It's down to a two on one, I assume. And that's going to be even worse because they're trying to find oh. the rest of Morocco and find it in the nick of time. And that's great for Lazy Boy. They managed to stop the rest, but Egypt are still doing good work. Senkai now trying to find the Reservoir, just waiting for Lazy Boy to get into the blue to find the heal. And Morocco... They will salvage that fight, but there is not that much time. It's a stage 5 ring. Damage is going to be immense. And they might be locked out, but at least they've gotten good elims. Same as Egypt here. Up to 8 in their current situation, but again, is downed. And they are locked out from the revive for the time being. Well, now EJ pulling up a surprise here. So far, 8 doing so good. And Desha is keeping eye onto the low ground where South Africa is uh, tapping onto the vehicle, punctured it, and not a vehicle will not be able to be used. Joker is still alive, but he's on the outside of the circle. But the moment he tries to go in, his next opponent will be Senegal that will be waiting for him. It's a very tough ass, as you, can, as you can see in the final circle. Morocco has a good position. They will be uncontested walking into the zone. Problem is that the other teams might be colluding together in some sense now, just trying to get themselves in the rotations trying to snatch the early high ground because you can see Algeria, they've moved into a good position, but the problem is that position is a low ground one. Morocco's going to be there. The other team's coming in from the east. So Algeria might be again in a position where they've taken early control. They're trying to wait for somebody to do something. But with Morocco's position, it could be problematic. Egypt as well, trying to take some time because there are South Africans that they've had their first interaction with to the north. And they are still trying to find that fight there. Joker as well, still alive, giving their team valuable points just for that placement. So things are going well for some of the teams, but it's just going to be a question of whether or not the Egyptians will be able to get back in. Will Morocco be able to find something? It looks like, again, we'll actually find something on Raouf. So Egypt, almost up to nine now. Mm, I'll be interested to see how long Joker can actually stay alive. Because now he is still collecting placement points. We are at the top seven here. And now Ivory Coast, Joker, getting closer and closer to the edge of the circle. But his opponents from Senegal doesn't know he's there. What if he can pull off a surprise by shooting them from the back? It's like that is the decision. Joker has to take as long as it takes just to stay alive. But proning like this means that you might be spotted. Good trigger discipline not to go for the one and done. Waiting for the rest of the team. It looks like the solo has not taken the angle. The samurai might end up as a ronin. Especially with the positioning of Joker. But you can see again. It's found a good position. But feed me. In the water it looks very unlikely that they will find success there. And Egypt might have just locked the Ghanaian out of there. 
It's only two players of Vegas is still alive. Might come to support, but look at the rest of Egypt. It's only again in here. Yeah, again, we're keeping an eye on to him. Yeah, and yeah. I think taking resources, and that's important because we were talking about how they were out of heels, they were out of meds, they managed to recover some of that, and they will go back to the circle now with much better odds for these resources. Joker still alive, and now I think the advantage should be Morocco's with the two players in the opposite end on the higher ground. Senkai and Lazy Boy might be able to pull something out of this, but it's going to be a big question of whether or not the teams in the East can do something. Because as you can see right now, South Africa's there, Egypt has two of their players there, and Joker is still the anomaly in this game. Yeah, Joker is still not spot out yet, but now the circle moved away from him, meaning that he needs to come closer to the circle. And that could also mean that Senegal... He has no choice but to pull the trigger, but because he's all alone, you need to stay quiet. Trigger discipline will be very important for Joker now. South Africa playing by the edge of the circle, still not really in it just yet. They spot up Morocco on the other end. Morocco could be their next target. And now Senegal is starting to make that move. And because of this move, Joker could have an entry. Joker could have a better position, but I don't think that they'll pull the trigger just yet. They're waiting and waiting for the top five placement just to make sure that that would be a reality and you can see Luigi boy might spot joker here but that is not the case not just yet it's a very tricky situation by the warehouse especially with the singali team trying to make a move towards the north side of the zone near to morocco and doctor they might not be aware of it but if people look their way that is not a very good position, but the problem is, as you can see, Senkai, they have to take the fight from the other end. They know that the South Africans are there. They are hearing bullets, but two teams on either end. The Lazy Boy might be in there for the freebies. They know the Doctor is there. It's going to be a spray mm. down for the guarantees first, trying to find Samurai there. But Samurai will stay alive for now, and Joker is going to strike. That's Yuji out. I think Senegal is only down to Samurai in that position. It's disaster striking. Beautifully done there by Joker as he secures the elimination point onto UG Boy. And now Doctor, normally he's the one to heal people, but now Samurai is the one that needs to heal him up. And Doctor, Smoke will be popped up behind him. Samurai will go in for the revive. They are by an airdrop, so they got extra utilities from that. But that airdrop may be worthless after this as the circle will close very, very soon. But now we move over to South Africa. They should be on a clear now. They have the clearest path in back in case the circle moves away from them. See, but and just looking at this, and I still believe that nobody's even aware of Joker's positioning, which is insane given the current circumstance. But like there are two players that are solos in this situation. Feed me more and Joker playing all alone, two flank positions that can be great once things happen the rest of the people are just squads either of threes or four trying to find something here and again with that sniper might be a big problem especially coming in from that long corridor feed me is now finally trying to make their move but you can see that they are locked out they mm. will go down and that should be it they're just biding their time for now doesn't look so good in the zone has moved and algeria and morocco are the biggest winners yeah, looking good so far for those two teams. Unfortunately, they couldn't secure the elimination point to feed me. Feed me gives himself to the blue. And totally understandable why. Because you don't want to give that point to your opponent. But Joker! Look at this Joker! He is still alive to now! Yeah, and he even might find more limbs. Two eliminations for the Ivorian team. Players are still there. South Africa to his left and two teams in front of him but great trigger discipline from joker the big anomaly of the situation we are almost going to be down to six teams matter of time to the PG gets out, but joker is trying to find something we'll find a shot and now it's all down to samurai but this ring will be absolutely devastating joker at least confirmed one of the kills just before going down and that will be it a top seven with two limbs for the ivorian south africa still alive might eat something out of it but they need to move quick they need to guarantee their position because three teams are the big contenders here one of them is morocco the second is algeria third one 
being each of these three teams has three players each. They are in a good position, but will they be able to capitalize? That's a big question because now people are trying to buy the ring is super small. They're trying to destroy the vehicles and Egypt if they do so. South Africa might be out of it trying to find the shots, but Mohammed will not be able to do so. Not for now. All right now we can see Samurai still caught on the outside. They don't know that he's there. Okay, he, they do know now. Okay, Samurai's trying to get away with the buggy, but Samurai being chased down. Marshmallow gets out his vehicle, but not enough time for him to pull out his weapon. And looks like Samurai will get away for now at least, but Samurai will be closer to the other teams and now Samurai is being shot at, Samurai is in trouble! Samurai caught up by Muhammad and Muhammad will eliminate Samurai from the map. Nine for Egypt now, a big game for them. And it's been a very good positioning power for Algeria, but only a single limb to speak of from that end. And again, looks like that they will be out of this. A great nade by Marshmallow in Morocco. They're getting their consistent kills. They're gonna just run through Sully in a literal sense. And now they still have the vehicle, a vehicle that is healthy and can tank a fair bit of shots. It's down to the last five teams. Morocco now are trying to capitalize this roof to try to find something on the upper floor. Our Lazy Boy, the Egyptians are trying to clear the angle, but as you can see, Lazy Boy with a molly to eliminate the remaining members. It's only down to Tornado. Trying to play this oh. one, but burned to a crisp by the team. Just trying to evade to the last corner, but no. Not too lazy by Lazy Boy, being floral to clear that one. And now Egypt has gotten control of that same building. Trying to play there against Morocco, but Morocco seems to be winning as they will, I assume, clear the last member in Raouf. And that should be Algeria out of this one. Egypt now in the top four, trying to find something. Vegas. Is the only player left, and Morocco has been having a great game. Now it's down to the last two members of Senkai and Lazy Boy. Looks like Senkai is going to be okay, but Lazy Boy under a lot of fire has to go back to get healed, and that will be some breathing space for the Egyptians at least. Oh, well, we got three teams in the same compound, but we have one player on the other side. They're just going to sit out of everything, but Lazy Boy nade it down by again. Beautifully tossed by again. And Morocco now, we need to pick him up. Lazy boy, six elimination points for him. Shows how valuable he is for the team. Yeah, Senkai trying to find something again. Spotted, oh! but a great nade from Senkai. Trying to play in the smoke, but Muhammad is in a great position. Just trying to find the last bit of bullets, and this is it. Morocco's out. As the fourth seed, it's only five players left. Three of these five are Egyptians. Two solos are all that separates Egypt from getting their win. In the second map, we've been talking about how quiet they've been in map number one. And despite being a man down from the very start, they managed to get a very big win. It's all down to Potato and Vegas to at least get some of them points because it's only a single limb for South Africa here. At least he managed to get a good amount of placement points. And based on his current position, there's a high possibility that he can at least get a second place finish. Now, Vegas is on the house on the lower ground. Egypt, not sure if they know that he's there, but Egypt not willing to let go of this compound just yet before they get the information that they would have wanted. All right, now we're at stage nine of the circle, meaning that the circle, the blue, will close entirely. They know that Vegas is down there now. They're going in for the charge. The name will be tossed out as an opener. Potato waiting for the other side. Potato could come in with a surprise. Yeah, Potato can guarantee at least a freebie. On Vegas, but that doesn't look to be the case. I think Egypt has spotted them, and now Egypt knows that the last two players are separate. The power of nades will come true at the current time. They need to find the kills back and forth. Egypt start chipping them down. But Vegas is healed back. Potato will be all the way down. It's down to a single Molotov, and Muhammad is out. That's a great shot from South African. Now Vegas might try to utilize the chaos, but that is not the case. Again. Playing gatekeep, Disha reviving Muhammad, and this should be it. Time is running low. It's only down to Vegas. Potato has been burned and dealt with. Vegas is the last player standing. Will Egypt get the win? It's a big game. 13 limbs. Will they get the 14th or will it be the clutch? Trying to play for the close corner for the shotgun, but no. The UMP spray from again is going to be great. 14 limbs, and Egypt will take map two. Yeah, and somehow Vega still managed to secure a second place finish in that round. Great survivability shown by him as well. Gotta give it to him. 
And now we check out the replay from the previous round. There were a lot of fights that happened in the blue during the first and second phase that took out a lot of players from there. Yeah, and I think this exact fight with Spamman just cry talking a bit too much might have just given each of the confidence and power control over the map to take their numbers. You can see a great performance by again, who I assume has gotten single-handedly like six or eight of these eliminations. And they've done great. They've been playing solo. They've kept, they made sure that they were not traded and they had the power to handle the situation, but that was not enough for the rest of the team. And again, Algeria for the second time feels like that they have been the disappointment. They do everything right. And then in the very last minute, when it comes down to getting their limbs, when it comes down to closing down their position, they were not successful. Morocco were able to route them out and Egypt were able to utilize the chaos. And well, that was it for map two. Yeah, this is a smart cheeky move here from Joker. But if you kind of look at it, actually, his elimination was stolen away. So he didn't actually get that one point. So he got eliminated without that point, unfortunately. But for Algeria, because they were in a prime position in this compound, we see the number of teams interested to take over this compound. They were surrounded at some point and they didn't really have an exit. And that's how they got cleared out. Exactly. And it's not even just being cleared out. It's like they boxed themselves into that single composition in that compound. And then the utility from Morocco was impeccable. But look at that. I love that stuff from Senkai. Just bouncing the nade off and taking the trade oh, at the beautiful. opposite end. That was just a beautiful play, but it was not enough. Too many members of Egypt in that position. And they couldn't deal with it. And again, it was again. They tried to wrap this one up. But as you can see, again, to start, again, to finish in Egypt. They managed to get a surprise win, something that is rather slightly interesting in the composition of the game. And things are starting to shake up because for the second time, Algeria with a good placement but no limbs. And these points that are starting to slip away from them could account to them dodging out of the top four or the top three that qualify. Yeah, that was a big brain move, not going to lie. But next, ladies and gentlemen, we're going into a smaller map from a big map to the smallest map available in competitive PUBG Mobile, and that's going to be Sandhaw. So make sure you stay tuned with us. Do not go anywhere. We'll see you after this break. Welcome back guys, after the first two games we are back into the studio. In the first one we saw the Morocco very uh, dominating uh, performance from their side. Uh, in the second plate it was uh, South Africa, in the third it was uh, Djibouti. Uh, I thought that uh, we are going to see more from the Egypt and that kind of happened in the second game. They were able to finish the first spot, Morocco taking the second and Ghana taking the third. So the score uh, changed quite a bit but Morocco still in the first spot uh, into the final table. Uh, Egypt actually from the second games is on the second spot and uh, South Africa is on the third. We still have uh, four games coming in front of us so the scoreline might change a bit but the casters are ready so let's get into the game number three. Well this is it we're back and well Andrew what a surprise that we have had. Sure we've had the staple we've had Morocco performing again but this time it was easier to snatch this one out, despite Algeria again coming oh so close. They're putting themselves in the right place, in the right time, but it was just not to be for them. Yeah, I think Morocco did decently well as well, but uh, we got to tabulate the score to sure. But anyway, Morocco, they because they had a significant uh, amount of in uh, round number one, so I think because of that gap, they would still be... Uh, yes, they are still at number one. Look at the gap here. It's a 16-point gap still between Morocco and Egypt. Exactly. And I think that, they, like, looking at the scoreboard, they're the one consistent team throughout the whole thing. Like, you just look at everybody else. They're the one that getting double digits on the two maps. Egypt got 24, which is a huge score. But looking at the first map, they only got two. South Africa with nine and six is pretty close. Algeria, disappointing again, but at least they get four points. And... 
it just feels like Morocco are the only team that consistently gave placements and eliminations, and that is aiding their success. But on the other end, like Nigeria only has one point. That is really surprising given like the popularity that people expected Nigeria to be one of the top teams competing. But so far, just feels like North Africa has actually been ruling over the South. Mm, yeah, I guess, you know, sometimes gamers, they like to call it like, oh, it's a warm-up round. So hopefully the warm-up is done for them because we'll be jumping to Sandhawk as our game number three. And for the first two rounds, we got sides flight path but this time around the flight path is going to be pretty nice going to cut in the middle from cow onto bantai so all these teams will be able to drop wherever they, they wish to but that also means that every drop spot is accessible we could see an early fight here exactly we could see early fights and especially with how small the map is and how little pois there can be in stages two and three we might see earlier fights but for the time being, everybody's just being rather safe. You can see that most of the teams are actually on the on the eastern side of the map. A lot of the teams are taking that spot. Egypt right there, taking the center of the map. And you can see on the bottom right that Egypt are on the heels. But South Africa, again, like silent but deadly in their influence. 15 points, third place. But they are hot on the heels by other nations and you know, it might just take one good map for nations like Djibouti, like Mauritania, for them to get back into play. But for now, I'm really intrigued to seeing that first ring. But how would it change the complexion of the map in your eyes? Like if one of these one of these underdogs managed to sneak a win? Wow. I mean, I think that not only uh, change the dynamics of the map, because you eliminate the top teams, but also you give some hope to the other teams that, hey, you know what? The teams, they are not invincible. They can be taken out. So I'll be looking forward to see if that kind of drama would happen. That kind of Cinderella story can happen, especially for teams who are current bottom. Uh, teams like Nigeria, for example. Teams like uh, Namibia, for example, uh, who only have like one in three. So if they can come up with a surprise, I think they'll make a great storyline. Exactly. The map is small. And there are a lot of opportunities for good close quarter combat. But I feel like that's where Morocco's bread and butter is. Still, like, excited to know where the ring is and where it will lead the teams. Like, I want to know, like, are, are there one of the top three that actually have a good positional advantage? Because First Blood has been drawn. Mauritania already drawing blood. And just looking at the rest of the team, you can see here in Namibia, we were talking about them maybe pulling something out of it, but no Vortex has been the storm that they couldn't handle in Red Zone. They've escaped it for the first time. They're still just scouting and trying to find the advantage, trying to find a sideline, but not to be there. All right, now the knock did happen, but Solitude could be picked up. And yes, he's being revived now. So no official first split just yet. Looks like they'll be Mexican standoff there inside of Pinan for a while. Uh, since the two teams, they are separate water. I'll be curious to know where the circle is as well. But now we're back onto Pinan. Mauritius Vortex is on the rooftop. So he's getting information on where exactly his opponents are at. Feeding back to his teammates. But there's Sky on the other side as well. As a double agent. If he gets another knock, it could be an enemy by Mauritius onto the other side to take them all out. Exactly, and look at Sky. That's a great position, but now it's all down to Vortex to try to find the angle. Soltitude is finally back on their two feet. Healed back up. And Sky's in a good position, just trying to route things out. A lot of steps are heard. No player spotted as of yet. You can see the outlines, ladies and gentlemen, but the players are not aware of the opposite team's exact position. Looks like Mauritania, they actually are doing the runaround here. They might know where Sky is. It's a goat Molotov to Ooh. route, goat out, but the nade. So close, but was not to be Sky. And he did out of that one, managed to find a position, trying to find gold, but they will be taken off. And now the trades has to come back in. You can see the bum was here, trying to find an angle. That one's the player are out. And well, it will be first blood. 
And already again, you can see on the scoreboard, Morocco's doing work with Moradius. They are trying to route out and they may be in that position. They managed to find a trade. And they are trying to find an angle. Vortex not good enough with that spray down. And they will go back. And maybe this time, Paradox will have some involvement. But for now, not to be on the opposite end. We can see some people have been brought out. I think Morocco might have actually confirmed a few knocks already. Beautiful flank here by Mauritius, not gonna lie. Uh, they traded one, but they managed to get uh, their opponent surrounded, so that's one advantage that they have. Vortex trying to get another knockdown onto Solitude. Solitude on the other side of the room. And now we can see movement here coming from Bum Bum Sir. He's going to go probably up a higher ground just to block off the exits. Yes, because parents arrive on the other side. So now Vortex is moving. Vortex in an open position. Gotta be careful, Vortex. Oh no! He got knocked down! Bum Bum said he's gonna save him, but Vortex is super low. He does he has to do it quickly. Like no nays, no smokes are left. The Bum Bum's there. They're talking tail and Paradox looks to be following suit. I think that they might have abandoned it. They're trying to find something. Paradox will find good shots from Red Zone, but not leading to a kill. Rob pretty low. Trying to find an angle, but now that's Nigeria trying to walk in. But Roach will be swatted just like that. Marshmallow. On the opposite end, taking a knock as well. And Morocco, they're trying to find kills with Marauders. They are not out of the woods just yet. They're finding some damage. You can see Bum Bum Sarah is trying to give Paradox a space to walk back in. But with no mechits, they need to take a lot of time. They need to wait for Paradox to region to get out of there. Because Red Zone have a good angle. And Paradox is staying indoors. And so are the members of Nigeria. Roach is back up on their feet. That was a good knock from Paradox, but was not enough. And now it's a three-team standoff. Two of these teams are hurt. You can see there on the top left, Moradius are two players down. It's only Paradox on Bum Bum's there. And they are waiting for their kills. The ring is on the top left. That is the northwest. You can see a lot of the teams are moving towards there. Egypt has a good position. They might actually have something today in this one. But so do Morocco. They're holding the opposite ends of the bridge. And this might be a problem because Morocco seems to be rounding out in that position. And the teams still on the bottom side of the ring on the south trying to make their way and work their way back in. But not to be for now. And some of the teams are actually still in the ring. And that's super weird and to be in the blue zone so late. Oh, yes. Uh, Look at South Africa. Interesting to see. Where are they? Um, okay, we can't really see them just yet. Yes, they're taking their time to get into the circle now. Now that this circle... Okay, this circle is really... Because you, you're separated by two main islands right now. The Camp Alpha Island the main peninsula so teams will still need to decide which island they want to be in and then yes where the circle will go after that it's going to be a big challenge here with this kind of circle it's definitely not going to be an easy one definitely not going to be easy the teams are trying to work their way back in red zone is knocked down it's not looking easy and that will be a paradox will get a second for their team now, things are looking a little bit better for Moroides, but as you can see, Lazy Boy might spot something. Three players there from Djibouti. It's a very dangerous end, especially with Kill Wasp. They're fighting the Egyptians, though. So that might be the kill they need. They're trying to find a scout. Nate in hand. Might be enough. Take Kill out. The Nate is going to be good, but damage is not Ooh. enough. Down to last sliver of health. And now the rest of the Djibouti members know that there's somebody around there, but they're not aware how many of them there are. I love the scouting play from Lazy Boy, but I'm just a little worried that this might be more than they can handle. But for now, Djibouti are actually not taking the bait. They're not trying to find that engagement. Playing really slow. 11 teams are left in South Africa finally to walk into the zone. Oh, it looks like a late rotation for them, which is absolutely okay. Because right now, teams will need to kind of like guess which part of the island that the circle will go. So some of the teams taking their time, waiting for the circle to move before deciding on their route. But now they'll have small targets of opponent right in front of the shots will be fired. He will get them down. Nicely done. 
that point will be secured, but Del Hawk counter fire at the point. Del Hawk, his teammates are behind him on the way to pick him up. Yeah, and that's a knock and a kill. Guaranteed for Asia. That's one limb point at least. Senegal in the lower end here. Not having a very easy time fending against the high ground that Egypt has gathered with their early rotation. And that's the power exchange that you have to take. Do you pick the time that you take the duel? That you fight against other squads? Or do you go in early and you set the stage and people have to walk into your own terms? Every team has their own side of the equation. And as you can see right there, the Senegalis are not in a very good position. You can see that Roach and Snuffy might find some spots tried around them out. Doctor trying to dissect the situation here, still groaning and trying to find the Egyptians, but they're giving them no space. People are on the opposite end of the road. They might just walk in right there from the south. The Camp Alpha Island is busy, and finally the squads are moving. The Algerians, they're taking their sweet time, but now on vehicles trying to strike in the nick of time and so are the south africans the two islands are gonna have actions with senegal they have to walk out of there because egypt Ooh. are moving and the island of camp alpha will be the grounds that we will fight upon that means that morocco are out south africa are out a lot of teams on the side of boot camp and tatmok have to make a very big rotation Oh, it's going to be hard for the teams on the main peninsula to move in at this point. We are at stage three. And look at the amount of teams earlier on. Really, really close with each other. It's going to be changing for the teams to get across. At the same time, we can see that Isco got naded down. Fights happening left, right, and center right now as Potato will need to defend their ground. Again, very close. They're just right in front of them. Solly behind. For West cover fire. But Ivory Coast, the four-man squad, solidly knocked down. This is an opening for Ivory Coast to come in, and South Africa will be eliminated. Yeah, exactly. Great job from Ivory Coast, finally getting their first team wipe. But you can see Snuffy doing a good job. Now, Morocco are finally taking that duel, but they need to win. Djibouti has been doing good, but they're not winning their trades. Only one player down, no limbs onto the Moroccan team. DSP has been doing an excellent job, and Kilwa will be finalized by Lazy Boy. That's another squad out of the equation. Morocco with four knocks in this one. But they need to get Marshmallow back up because teams are ready to walk in. It's going to be all down to the Camp Alpha Island. Will they be able to deal with it? Because as you can see, Morocco are trying to hold off the rotations. They know that they are holding the bridge, but teams will have to go through them south africa is out egypt still holding that power position but you can see algeria there as well on the other end and the hot in is held as well a lot of power position has already been taken so what's there for morocco to get that's the big question okay senkai he sees his opponent on the other side but trigger discipline is not going to pull the shot oh, he's waiting for a different angle at the same time, they are keep still caught on the outside by Lazy Boss, the trigger. Now putting pressure on Namibia. Namibia loses one. What going to do is putting pressure onto them. Long range coming from Lazy Boy. Will they connect? Looks like it will, but it does get out to the vehicle. The vehicle is currently smoked up. Lazy Boy could not finish up the job. It's okay. It's going to be hard for the members of Namibia right now with a smoked up vehicle getting into the zone. Yeah, not too much to find. And as you can see, you're talking about it. Egypt now are capitalizing, getting one of the knots down. Players trying to play underneath the bridge for Ivory Coast, but Egypt has a very good sightline. Things are starting to be difficult for Morocco, who has to cross through. They have to get through the bridge. And you can see two teams are there. Whether it is Egypt from the south, team of Ivory on the bridge. Or even the Algerians that are holding the lakes. It's a very tough angle in Solitude. Still alive. Trying to make the best that they can out of this. Ghana trying to hold the trigger. Feed me is trying to feast upon the Ivorians. Two knocks already down. One from Egypt and now one from Feed me. Just a matter of finalizing these skills. But you know who will? It will be Marshmallow. Getting a freebie. But Carry Boy will be knocked down to the zone. And now Senegal might try to get a wounded Morocco in the nick of time. Lazy Boy can't spot the players trying to play for it. You can see Sama trying to get that kill, firing a few shots away. Will they be able to best Lazy Boy? Not the best way to 
but a shotgun might be enough, but no. A swing too wide. And Ghana will knock them down. Morocco are down to their last legs. Only Marshmallow left. They know where they are. Marshmallow's taking things slow. And again, Morocco might be knocked off. Team that has been doing great. And Senkai is just walking through everyone with a vehicle. That is a very risky behavior. They're going to take some shots back. But Egypt, they're continuing to farm Ivory Coast. Chaos is never ending. And Egypt will even find another knock here on the Ivorian team. Oh, it looks like Morocco is in trouble as well. They're kind of surrounded by teams. Crazy gets knocked down. Crazy gets eliminated by again from Egypt. Mello is moving in. Now Viga tries to get away. This area is not within the circle. The zone closing in. Marshmallow perhaps a nade tosses it onto the second floor, but nobody is there. Viga is in the room. Yeah, but at least that bot Marshmallow enough time to heal up. Viga on tier 3 armor. That's going to be useful against the shotgun. But will that deal happen? Looks like that will not be the case. Marshmallow running for the hills. Running for the zone. And Vegas again. Second time might be the charm. As the late lurker. The rest of the team are playing on the outskirts of the zone. And Ivory. Down two members from the assault of Egypt. Will they be able to hold for now? Morocco still have a hope. In the name of Marshmallow. Trying to farm some kills, trying to find something. But again, look at Algeria. We've spoken about their endeavors before. Top seven teams with that final limb. Soltitude will finally die to the ring. And Algeria will finally get something done. That will be their second limb. Trying to find Skinny. It is, will not be the case as Marshmallow. We'll just walk into the trap laid down by the Ivory team. And Ivory Coast will sneak into the top six. Algeria with three elimination points. Things are looking better for them. At least they have a good control of the zone. But now the ring has shrunk and is straight into the open. The only team left with four members is Egypt. They have the advantage in manpower. But will they be able to convert a second win here? It looks like movement by Algeria. So cool. They still have the high ground though. And this high ground is really valuable. It is arguably the best high ground in the map. And now with them having control of it, it gives them a good advantage. Uh, right now we can see that they're trying to stop other teams from coming into the circle. Well, Mauritius, one of them, Mauritius, hops onto the vehicle, gets away. A little bit of a risk being in open position, but they have a compound to work with. Before going into the circle, they should be okay. Ralph tries to stop them, and now Ralph will open from stopping them from getting into the circle. If they don't get in soon, I mean, we are like stage 5. The zone will be punishing zone is punishing the position they're in it's not easy either you can see Sengal on one end egypt on the other algeria holding the high ground as well it's not so easy for the team and now you can see each and every tick of that ring is just shrinking over the hp Meridius are now fighting in the middle of nowhere ghana's trying to find shots and ghana will find something no it will actually be raouf to find one of these knocks trying to find something but no iron will even find a second and bum bums there and this time, finally Algeria managed to do something. Paradox as well. Being knocked out. Algeria doing great work getting their kills. But will they be able to get Big Ho? That's the big question. That's one player in the middle of their ranks that might catch the one player here on the top of the hills playing all alone. Egypt is a second team with four members. But they are sticking together, playing by the compound. They know that the Nigerian is there. The car is closed. They will take the car, but they will not be able to realize that the player is there. The zone will be enough. And I think that's it. Nigeria will be able to take one down. And that's one of the two teams that had full capacity being brought down. But still, Algeria are raining hellfire upon this lobby. It was unfortunate. They didn't know that someone was waiting for him and the vehicle was pretty much a bait. Ah, oh, man. That would be devastating. But now, look at the circle shift. The circle still goes towards the high ground where Algeria at. I'll be concerned for the two teams on the north side, still in the compound. Not only they're close to each other, but they need to cross the road. And we got Egypt keeping an eye on them. Egypt keeping an eye on them. Algeria keeping an eye on Egypt as well. Algeria has the greatest position in this lobby. But they are down. Person. Will they be able to find something? I'm pretty sure. Iron is just waiting for them to cross. It's a matter of time. They can find 
Why don't take a thought? And that will be it. Raul will actually take one of the Egyptians. So they are taking names left and right, holding all the angles. But it will actually be Senegal to clear the Ivorians before going down. Vegas finding something. And now again, getting a second kill onto Wilker. The kills are traded back and forth. Ghana trying to find something. Egypt players are on low HP. But Ghana only has one member left alive. That's Vegas trying to play in the smoke. Healed up by the A kit. Trying to find the space. But walking into the middle of the open here is just a recipe for disaster. A recipe for Egypt and Algeria to rain down upon you. It's a matter of time. And I think Vegas will actually go down to Algeria, not to Egypt. So Algeria has eight Olymp points. Now it's down to the two final teams. Algeria with the high ground. Egypt with the superior numbers. Will they be able to finalize it, especially with Raouf, knowing the angles? Again, it's the only one that's at least hiding from the sidelines. The hills are rocky, and so is Egypt climbs to the top. That's coming for the other side. They seem to not know that Deja is close by. Muhammad gets eliminated by Raouf. Getting in trouble. He's been pinned down. They'll hop to, as well as Deja. They're very, very part. And they're still not in the circle yet, except for Deja. Okay, Deja sees what? Deja pulls the trigger. Deja gets the knockdown. Deja gets the knock, and that's going to be big. But the rest of Egypt need to find a sideline. The problem is Deja is all alone, but the nade might be devastating. The ring is super small, but the uphill battle might be able to continue. Three vehicles. That's a good nade, but that's not enough damage. They're trying to trade Yuto back and forth. It's all about flying to blow up these vehicles. Trying to find an angle for Deja, who has a shotgun. Now trying to play for the lower side, knowing that Iron is low. Hearing Raouf as well. We we're speaking about the experience, and they are calm under the pressure. But they might be calm. No, the nade will not be enough. Still, Algeria and Egypt with all to play for. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. The Molotov might be enough. That's going to be rousing them out of the position. It's only down to the last two teams. They just trying to find something, but no. Knocked down by the nades. Now, so that's two members of Egypt in the low ground. Algeria clearly has the advantage, but they will be able to finish it up. They are healing. They will get their resources back from the down teams. And I think with one last ring, Egypt has the control, but they don't have the control of the ground. They're fighting from low ground here. Oh, but looks like Algeria does go. Okay, Nate tossed by again. It does land. It does clip them. But right now, it, they're waiting. They have to circle. They can play the patience game. Algeria now has to move. They're finding their way down. Raouf. Oh, he's going to take some damage. He has first aid though, so he can reset himself as he gets into the circle. Still with the high ground. Still with the high ground, still with the control. Now Egypt, they must have heard the drops. They know that the angle is not easy. You can see they'll have trying to play for the opposite end. This is it. This is the final zone. Everybody's playing on the mountain. Nades are going to be devastating if either side of them can land it. Raouf is taking the initiative, trying to find the angle again. Still on full health. And the ring will push the players down. They'll have the insurance policy here for Egypt. Trying to play for the ring. Again, trying to take the time. Getting that nade through. Trying to route Raouf and the rest of Algeria. That would be a good Molotov. But he has to fight with two members at the same time. Trying to isolate them. And it will be Raouf Ooh. to find that one. It's all down to the half. Trying to hide. Trying to waste time. This is the final ring coming in. Algeria have control of the high ground. The ring is oh, closing wow. in. They'll have has the advantage. It's just a matter of time. Will they be able to spot him? The Hap is still healthy, still hiding in the center of the ring. Raouf has to make the drop. They have not spotted the Hap, but the Hap has spotted them. Iron is down. It's all down to Raouf, who has to drop down. The Hap is just trying to dodge the angle. Iron is dropped just so that their teammates know the angle. Now it's all down to the Hap, trying to play for the lower angle. They have to drop. It's a matter of a one-on-one. -on -one. The ring is shrinking and shrinking. The hills are not to play for. Raouf is trying to take that angle, but will they have be able to find the victory? It's a back and forth. They're both juggling, but the high ground might be too high for Raouf to play with. They have to eventually drop down, trying to find Delhab, but no shots landing back and forth. It's going to be down to the wire as Delhab is just waiting for the very last bit. Raouf might have the better of the ring. Raouf might have the better of the health. Raouf is going to get the drop, but it will not be enough. Each have to win for a second time in a row. Oh, I mean, and the other day it was about the circle and what space that they have at the final moment. Egypt clearly has a lot more space, Algeria, at that final moment. And there was no option for Algeria. It was either they give themselves to the blue 
or they drop down and they still get knocked. So there wasn't any choice actually for Algeria. But anyway, it was a good move for these teams. Both of them had their own distinct ways of playing that final circle. And it was Egypt that came on top. Egypt riding from the high of map 2 now on the third map. On the halfway point of the day, getting two wins. That is like very good for them considering the scale of opponents they have both in Morocco and Algeria. They managed to deal with the two teams that everybody had favored. And as you can see, this time around, I feel like South Africa has been neutered. A lot of the underdog teams managed to get limb points. But Algeria, I think this is the biggest tale. Algeria finally have came to life, getting a top two finish with good elims, getting themselves all the way down to the wire. They've done great work, but Egypt still managing to clear them off. And you can see there, Lazy Boy was the last member of the Moroccan team at the very end, but it wasn't enough. And a lot of these teams just put themselves in not the best position. So I feel like we have to give credit to the IGLs of the top teams here. Algeria, Morocco, Egypt, they all make good calls. I love the call of just letting them have play for the low ground, for the ring, for the time, while allowing the other one to play 1v2. It bought a lot of time for Egypt, and I think that ultimately was what secured them the victory here. Yeah, totally. I mean, this kind of circle is tricky to play. And the fact that they could slide to the to the final few circles, I mean, this is definitely the IGL doing its work. LG again, just showing what sort of rotation that they can pull off with. Again, another on-point rotation for me, going up straight to the high ground of Camp Alpha as high ground. Because of this, they managed to survive this long. And not only that, they just more than 10 elimination points in this kind of circle. I always say that the, uh, this mountain of Camp Alpha is the most valuable area in the whole kind of in the whole circle of Camp Alpha Island. Damn, they managed to win at that one. And well, Egypt is only 7 11, so the score should be pretty close between the top two seeds. So it's going to be a very difficult situation for the two of them. Let's see what they can do from here on out, because I feel like that is the big question that I have. As for now, like, you know, we had favorites. I, I personally favored Morocco, despite being Egyptian. I think Morocco were favored to win. When I look at the name, look at the way that they play. Algeria has the experience. Morocco has the team that has played together internationally and stuck together. So they've had that power point to them. But Egypt, despite being a mixed team, a mixture of the players that either play in Africa or Arabia, they managed to have good calls, good individual skills, and they are keeping up with the macro that the better teams are delivering. Yeah, since I'm Asia, so I'll be the neutral party here. So I do agree with your picks. I think they are really good. But uh, let's see if they can continue to be good as we will come back from our Please general, when we come back, we will head back on to our OG that's going to be in Rango. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. See you after this.
show and we'll fly You don't have to feel like you're on your own No one should have to dance alone on tonight For somebody to make memories in a bank forever in time There's no reason to be hard to find
and Cloud, we've had a very interesting like game right there on the third map, really. It's, it was a North African finale between the two teams. Egypt managed to once again find the win. And now that puts him back on the map, just as you can see, Morocco, with how good they've been, with how consistent they've been, they managed to keep their first place. But Algeria actually managed to equalize the same amount of points in second place as Egypt, the winners, have gotten with the amount of eliminations that they've gotten over there. Yeah, we can start to see the gap here. Morocco, Egypt, uh, significant gap with at least the number four team, Ghana, right now. And we are still looking for the top three, so it doesn't matter where you're number one, two, three, as long as you're the top three. But with this kind of gap, I really wonder how are the teams going to catch up. Of course, we still got a lot more games to go, but they are just showing the level of consistency with the level of quality of gameplay that they have. Like what you said, Morocco looking to be the favorites to just top this group. Definitely, Morocco having consistent performances throughout match one, two, and three, but they're starting to taper off a little bit. And I feel that this might be a place where teams like Algeria, teams like Egypt, teams even like Nigeria, who has been pretty quiet, might bring out a big surprise. Ivory Coast has already like, gotten their foot on the pedal, as they say. And now it's going to be a matter of seeing whether or not the North African dominance continues because we've gone to our first half of the game and now the second one is underway and this is a much more neutral flight. Yeah, we can see that this kind of flight, the teams are able to reach to their testers unless if they choose to drop into Novo or Milta Power, it might take a little bit of a, um, a flight or a glide, so to speak. But nevertheless, earlier on in game one, we did see a few early eliminations, especially when teams try to get vehicles. But that was also because of a difficult circle. I wonder if we'll get the same. So far, our circles, all three have been fairly challenging. Yeah, I would agree. And I think, you know, for, before the last map, for the last in Wrangle, the position was super hard that people had to go all the way to weird places just to get the hard spawn vehicles. They managed to get some of them. But now the situation is going to be much more standard. People can play a much more confident game and just know, okay, we have the entire map. We don't have to worry about anything. You can see Morocco just having the liberty of going throughout the entire map right there in the left side. And the ring is actually going to be a little bit eastern. You can see it has places like Far, Milta, even Milta Power that he's spoken about. So it feels like it's a good place. It hasn't given you an indication of what to come, but at least it's given you that like you should go to the east side. You're incited to try to go early to the east and get to these unutilized areas like Milta and Milta Power that none of the squads have headed to. Well, speaking about an area that is occupied by the teams. Looks like we got two teams inside of Yasnaya here. But uh, there seems to be a little bit of a truce. So two teams, yes. Yasnaya, one, one town, yes. But there's a split between these two teams. Gold will be keeping eye on to Senegal in case Senegal does anything funny. I think so far both teams will be focusing on the loot and maybe getting local. But um, looking at the minimap, it does look like both teams, they are currently in the circle of the, so we might see a slower match inside of Yastaya. But I don't expect to see early fights there, just because both of these teams are cool. I'm truly expecting to see a much slower, a much more calculated map than the map one. I think the first in Wrangle was just such an outlier that it will not happen again for a very long time. We're going to continue seeing the slower pace of the game. People avoiding each other early, just getting the hard spawns and getting the loot that they need to carry themselves forward. As you can see, Namibia are trying to find as many of these health and resources that they can find. But they're still a little bit short on mechas. They're still a little bit short on these tools. And one of the important things that we've seen, we've seen the power of grenades and molotovs throughout the first three maps. And I think a lot of these teams will want to gather that resource to make use of it because in parts of the map, like Rosehawk, like Pashinki, where 
you can actually expect a lot of fighting to be around building complexes. The nades and Molotovs are going to play a big part in routing people out of tough positions. Yeah, definitely. Utilities like that uh, have been a strong meta, especially for the past few seasons. So we can expect teams to really prioritize those. In fact, they might want to drop a good number of uh, healing utilities to make space for that. But just because of how good they are, especially with the compound fights, used to flush enemies out. It's going to be, it's great if teams are able to gather that amount of uh, utilities to be used at the later stage and expand them too much very early on. Yeah, and one of the teams that has actually been on a quiet come up has been the Ivory Coast. They've had a good game on the last map. Well, that might change because the change from San Hockton and Wrangle is a very big one. Will they be able to adapt? That's going to be the big question. Egypt as well was one of the teams that struggled in the first in Wrangle. And now they have to fight their way out of this one. You can see that Ivory Coast are putting themselves in a good position. A lot of the teams are moving towards these early rotations, moving towards getting early control of the eastern part of the map because that means you get early access to these unclaimed areas. And you can also go back knowing that not a lot of teams will invest the time to go to these, like I would say, more remote areas that are not in the center of the map, depending on where the circle will go in stage two and three. Yeah, but there are some teams who might want to play the, um, I would say, safer route by just staying at the sides. Uh, so far, we can see there are a couple of teams that do that. And they can still afford to do that because it's a fairly kind circle. It's in the middle of the map. And we can see that there are some, some teams who like to play, and that's absolutely fine. It's really down to the comfort level and the strategy of that particular team. Now, speaking about teams, so it looks like we have a movement here from Senegal. They're getting closer towards Namibia. Namibia gathering up at the compound towards the end of this area. I, I wonder, this, is Senegal interested to take this early fight? Because Actually, both teams, they could use more points. Like exactly, and Samurai, I don't, I don't know if Samurai is even aware of the prisons in Namibia on that spot, and that might be a very big problem because the two teams are approaching towards each other, and you can see as well one of the other silent heavies has been Djibouti, who are playing in that very comfortable outskirts of the map play that you mentioned. Because, as you said, the ring encompasses a very big amount of the map. You even have parts of the north right there, and the areas the north of Roshock. You can go from shooting range to there. You can even see the teams that were at Quarry that are now starting to move towards the zone. So the zone is very forgiving. A lot of land space, a lot of empty space as well to play towards. So you don't have to contest too much early on. And so far, all the teams are using that comfort to set themselves up, get all the utility that they want, and... Again, look at Algeria. They are trying to take an early fight in Algeria, and Egypt might actually be in a little bit of an altercation if they come towards each other. Yeah, I'll be my eye on to the areas on the outside of Pachinki, because I think that that will be a focal for our lazy boy. Okay, he spots out members from Mauritius, but because he's all alone, it's not a trigger, but somewhere else, a trigger has been pulled. Red Zone will be knocked down. Not either just yet. Raul knocked down as well by Delha from Egypt. Yeah, and Delhap will finalize that kill, and Nisha's gonna get a second one. We were speaking about the confidence of Algeria. They're good rotations, but they are no way to be found. Kimo as well is taken down. That's two for Egypt, who are doing great work. And speaking of doing great things, they are just looking to finalize these kills. That are three knocks down for them. Now Senegal as well, all ready to strike upon the trigger, putting themselves into that position, but players on the roof are not going to be easy to clear. Will Senegal be able to do so? They are taking their time. They know that they can take the time to heal. They've spotted Solitude, trying to play with the nades, with the Molotovs, with the smokes, to make something happen out of that one. But for now, Namibia are still holding strong, despite them taking a considerable amount of damage in the rooftops. Well, looks like uh, Senegal is interested to take this fight. And shot after shot, nade after nade, Vitosa Samurai is holding the back door. So right now, Namibia has no exit. They're being surrounded by Senegal. 
They've been surrounded and they are being bombarded. Right here, Cloud. A lot of damage, and that's gonna even be a knock on this altitude. That might be the ghost line, but they have to go all the way from the bottom floor. They're trying to work their way up. You can see Yuji Boy is holding strong. They are trying to lock them out. It's a very close corner. They will have to find throughout the stairs. They will take the fight there, but now looking at the situation, things are not looking good for an BBS. Senegal can retreat and get the rest as they are doing at the moment. Everybody's walking back. They took in a knock, but they have the time to just heal up, go back, and they are draining out the media, who, of course, has been expending a lot of their heals just because of the nades now. They might have to try to do so because it's an eight-second window where they can fight against the res, and they will do, they will strike, and now there are two people up. They're trying to take the angle. Oh. Gold will make the initiative, and now it's down to Doctor to consider the clutch. Will they be able to do so? No. Mm. Will not turn in time and go to the triple just to find it out. Two for GOAT, the last two has been collected by Namibia, and that's a very big win for them. And now looking at the map, Algeria is only down to one person. It's a very tough situation for them. Egypt is still holding that area down from school to the southeast. And one of the teams that we've actually been neglecting because of how safe that they're playing is Morocco. Morocco now might walk in in the top 10 just get a lot of limbs and get themselves in a good spot. They can see teams like Poroidus are finally rotating back into the zone. And now the teams that were already in, they've expanded a lot of resources. We're speaking about Senegal and Mauritania right there in that angle, on, or Namibia rather. And Namibia has won the fight, but they've expanded a lot of their resources. They have to regroup. They have to loot again to try to take a fight. And that will buy times for other teams to walk in. You can see Morocco. They are taking the Northern Avenue. They are taking that fight. And things might not be easy, especially with them spotting the rotations. At least he spot, spots out someone on the other side. So I guess with that information, are they going to go there? They have towards the direction. Okay, Muhammad is all alone. Right now, they're just going to pass by. Okay, the rest of us together with him. So it looks like they're going to pass by after gathering that information because this still has stage two. So this fight with so much space still available, might not be suitable for them at this point. Egypt scopes out, shoots out the lazy boy, does clip him a little bit. Second time around, tries out the lazy boy, but for another angle, it's gonna be again knocking down the lazy boy. And looks like Egypt will secure their fourth elimination point. Four elims from Egypt. Big play. And again, managing to find the big win in here. They'll have as well, trying to flank around. Seeing these bodies and seeing these vehicles are going to be a big win for the Egyptians. They can just hold that area. It's a pretty comfortable spot for them. And again, we're speaking about the power teams. Algeria was doing really good. Morocco was doing really good. But now Morocco are starting to falter and Egyptians. They are ramping up. And this might be the time for a South African team to actually steal that one from them. Because the two top teams are busy spotting and fighting each other. That means that regions like Moroidas who are spotting people, places like South Africa, who has been pretty quiet in this game, might actually find something in Nigeria. A big team with a big fan base behind them. Will they be able to make them proud? Because for now, they are spotting information back and forth and Snuffy playing as a scout in the off-road vehicle. Will they be able to escape? Because Egypt are looking to enroach into Snuffy. Snuffy, gotta be careful that he's actually surrounded the members of Egypt, okay. Now they see eye to eye each other, Egypt comes down, he shoots, Snuffy wins the fight beautifully that by Snuffy. Definitely giving back to the fans through that fight. And now Nigeria has the numbers, Muhammad is on the other, Muhammad, is he going to join on the fight? But looks like Muhammad, he may want to consider because Nigeria right now, they are, they have lost Roach. It's 3v3 he comes in. 3v3 and they're trying to walk in, but you can see the South Africa are contemplating the decision to make a move. Disha's making one. Disha's walking straight right in, trying to look for a vehicular manslaughter, but that will not be the case. Snuffy playing around the smoke, taking their time. Three members are there, but Disha has a very good position now. But the problem is that position is exposed by South Africa, who are taking the fights. But Muhammad will finalize that kill. Now Snuffy's in there. 
Crone tries to play it on the ground and will be brought back down to the ground by Egypt, who are continuing their impressive form. Seven elimination points. They don't even know where South Africa are. They've gotten their wins. And Mohammed is trying to lock down Morocco, who are trying to play for now. Mohammed has to escape. It's a very tough ask of him. Nate in hand, trying to find the limb. That will not be the case. Called down by Marshmallow. And Morocco are back in the fight. Two members dead for Egypt. And everything that they have done has just been stolen from under them by the thunder of the Moroccos. Oh, but nevertheless, Egypt at this point, they managed to get seven elimination points. Still on the roll with those eliminations. So, still looking good so far, but they only left with two players. But now the circle. Where will it go? Will it be in the area? Will it be in the high ground? Looks like it's going to move towards the left. And it's going to be some high ground there that the players can play with. But there's a lot of open space that the players can choose where to park themselves. Yeah, and it doesn't look good for a lot of the teams. I feel like South Africa are very comfortable and people are walking in towards the shelter. And that's a good bit of cover. But now, Iron, that was a solo player being spotted and being brought it down. Ooh. And that's Algeria out. That's it. Iron trying to hide there. But will only be good for a top 10 finish. Teams have established their power points, and you can see two teams, Djibouti and Namibia, are there holding themselves strong by opposite sides. One by the cave, taking the vehicle and running from the hills. And this time, there are a lot of teams still alive with four members. A lot of the strays has been taken care of. Speaking of strays, Joker is just trying to find an odd bullet. That might headshot somebody and take them down, but that will not be the case. Nine teams left and stage four is upon us. The ring is moving. And the options are starting to run out for the teams. Ooh, not go starting to close again. And options will be even lesser for the teams. You can see three teams in the same frame right now making their rotations. Same time them trying to stop other teams from coming in. Joker will be knocked out by Paradox. So we get another elimination coming in soon. The long range shot putting pressure onto Ivory Coast. They don't know where Paradox exactly is at. But Paradox will be pressure on the blue. Now Paradox still putting pressure. Paradox, he has to move as well. He has to reverse it. He can still tank it out and he has a vehicle. So great for Paradox. He'll get out now. Yeah, but they need to get out in the opposite end. He can see Senegal are fighting elimination. Djibouti are trying to respond, but that is not enough. Senegal will find two, and even two from the back just to secure it. Djibouti are looking to be out of it, and Senegal will up their elimination count to four, healing back up. Only eight teams left. And now, Ivory Coast are having a very rough game. They need to walk out, but you can see that the Mauritanians are walking through. That's a great nade. Joker is out, trying to look for the vehicle kill, but that will not be it. Bum Bum Sir will not bump straight into the rest of the team. Now, the rest of the kills are going to be confirmed. And that should be it. They managed to up their tally to four. It's a very even game. Everybody's getting points out of it. A lot of upsets are happening. And the seven teams that are remaining, two out of the top three are not in them. Oh, but we got the eliminations coming soon. As we can hear, another one got knocked down. By the same time, Namibia. Okay, Namibia should be on the clear. But they are only two players left, but because there's no other teams around them, they should be okay to hang on onto the next stage at least. With 20 more seconds on the clock, Potato will be knocked down by K from afar. Marshmallow now trying to find his next target, trying to scout another rub in preparation for the next piece of the circle, but there's another team just right beside him. Hey, Bum Bum Sir. Bum Bum Sir doing his scouting work as well. Uh, looking at the circle, the circle will prove crucial next as it's the fifth phase. Now the next circle, go towards Sully and Cole. Actually, a very even ring for everyone. Everyone has to fight. But some teams do have the number advantage. And speaking of which, you can see next to Egypt, there is a very sneaky big hoe that can take care of only two that are remaining from Egypt. So flank options. For the solo players are definitely there a lot of teams are wounded a lot of teams are down members 20 players among seven teams are left and one of the few that have their full numbers in order 
Armoroidus. Yeah, four players of Morocco are only down to three. Trying to find an Algerian player there. Damage is good. Oh. And now, Carry Boy will just carry that kill over to their team. Two limbs were the Moroccans, three players were still finding angles. Egypt are not that far off though. That means that they have heard the bullets. They are ready for the engagement, but Morocco taking their vehicles and walking back to safety. Might even be considering the attack on Egypt, the siege on the sons of the Nile. The pharaohs are in a very rough spot. They might be left by who what we call them. Moroccans. It's a very tough situation. You can see that Disha is still hiding. Moroccans are actually just rounding them out. They might get out of the village and Disha is still playing inside the vehicle out of all things. Oh, no, the Disha is there. They surrounded yeah. Disha, but he didn't stop. Oh, okay. So Disha has the information right now. Senke knocked down. Disha, if we can move now, but the rest of his teammates, they are still in this compound. This compound is not with Soko. But they're going up against Morocco. So it's going to be the number one and number two team going to get each other. But looks like... Well, Bum sir. sir. Have but in. Yeah, they might even find an angle. You can see Marshmallow walking in with a vehicle, trying to get rid of Bum Sir. But they will also jump back out. Marshmallow now surrounded by multiple teams. Oridus will have to walk back. Gamma will get salted, dude. With that nade. Disha's still stuck in the car. That is a very awkward position to be in, and you can see it all happen. Trying to cover for their teammates. There are only two players left. Oroidus in the top five, and so are South Africa. They have four players alive. They can try to eliminate this race. But Morocco circling around their prey, circling around the Egyptians, just waiting for their final hour. Time is ticking here. And well, Cloud, I think that they will be taking no honorifics, no sirs for the Egyptians. They can even see the Moroccans are just dancing around them. Yeah, I think they're just trying to bait out just to make sure to who makes the first move. But then again, the Egyptians, they are on the outside of the circle. Now the Moroccans, they are holding them back. They are pressuring them with the blue. Taking damage. Now Gaia on to Carry Boy. Carry Boy gets away together with Sanke, but now they're going for the siege. They fight. Carry Boy will be the one to be at the forefront. Carry Boy will finish him off and then eliminate it. Down to four teams. Egypt out of the equation. Morocco is the only team left from the top three. Algeria had a very early exit trying to find Egypt. And Egypt won that fight. Now Morocco capitalizing carry boy using a distraction to the best work. Amoroidus still trying to find some work. But the mouse. They haven't been finding success. Carry boy has the time and space to heal. The problem is Bama is in a good position to find a flank. They will need to find an area to kill. You can see that they are being surrounded, but they are still making it work with Marshmallow. Getting that down. Trying to get out of the knock and South Africa is just raining hellfire. From a very safe position they have a good angle just throw bullets and worry about nothing Sully is gonna take marshmallow out Bama still in there Spamma will take carry boy i think that's it for morocco three teams are left and north africa will not have a representative in this game Ooh. oh bum bum sir knocked down from afar Paradox needs to get away. He's still on the outside of the circle. He's been pressured by the other team. They're not allowing Mauritius to get into the circle. South Africa pulls off a long range shot. Now Paradox. And now Paradox will be taken out. As Pama finalizing that kill. Taking that one. To their team. And now. Trying to find the last member of the team. It's nine members left. Four of them are Ghanians. They have a very big lead, but South Africa are super safe in their position. They have the ring in their advantage. They have the compound to play in. It will be a hard rotation for the rest of the team. And you can see Hates has to work with this. But not too much to work with because South Africa has pulled the trigger. South Africa are trying to wrap around the player, making it only a one-on-one -on -one in terms of squads. Hates is still there. 
routed out though south africa and ghana both are fighting for this riverbeck is waiting for Hayes to smokes they will eventually fade stage six ring is closing in south africa trying to find the shots but they are the ones that are taking the brunt of the damage and i think that this will be it they're just gonna play as safe as they can trying to pull out hades but you can see that senegal are still fighting for it not letting it go Ooh, and finally hades eliminated and that is it for them now we're down to the last two teams and the low range comes in on the solid solid knockdown will it be south africa taking home the chicken dinner or their opponents the other side kana taking it well that's gonna be a very big question here they are back cloud they've managed to get their vehicles they're getting their rotations and at least south africa are not in the open but sully will be high and dry and find the rest of their teammates in the river they're trying to find an escape but no too many openings in the car and this should be it two squads it separates us from everything ending here sully is down it's all but a matter of time and spamma is trying to find a shot on the potato it's a good position for the two teams of spamma is not being able to find any bullets potato playing it rather safe it's gonna be a four on two because sully is down it's a matter of time before sully is out of the round but well they'll be able to find an answer griff will knock down nell will finalize the kill on nell and that will be a three on two things are looking rather okay for south africa will it be their first win that is the very big ass that they have nades are good they have smokes feed me is being fed through damage and fire everything that's thrown their way utility is good griff will manage to finalize that kill looks like that they will turn it around from a 4v2 here oh um, they maybe they could but right now they don't have the circle fortunately they'll be pressured by the blue and ghana they have control of the circle how is africa gonna come in when the blue reaches onto them they have to move the smoke bridge will be created spammer will be on an off angle he sees potato he's griffin and now the shots will be fired on the Griffin. Griffin, super duper low, 10% of half level. Oh, it's knocked down. Very close. South Africa, though, they're trying to heal. It's a very tough angle for Spamma, who still have TDS alongside them. It's just a matter of time for the two teams. The final ring has 30 seconds left. The wall of smokes for the two South Africans. As they are waiting, their revive might just come in. And that would be the case, a two on three. Definitely favorable for the team with the better numbers. But South Africa might find something to the edge of the smoke. Bama still holding the same position. Will Potato and Griff be able to best them? You can see on the x-ray, it's a very tough fight for everybody. Spamma's taking damage, but Griff as well. It's not finding any openings, trying to play on the edge, but the high ground with the Ghanaians is making things super hard in Ghana. They have the big lead. South Africa playing with everything to win, but the position seems very losable here for them. Ghana still has the so-called advantage. They can wrap and oh, wait a second, the knockdown on the Sparma. Could this be again the bomber for South Africa? They just need to find the rest of Ghana. Right now, if Ghana gets a chicken dinner, it's very likely they'll go up to the top three. But South Africa could stop them. Let's see here, Africa, they see the mobile of the vehicle. I think they're going in to save a teammate. Feed me, is going in to, to save Spama. Player one is just keeping eye on the other member of South Africa. Right now, Spama will be revived at the same time. Griffin wants to go, but Griffin, not only Potato left, Potato being chased down by the blue as well. They pull the trigger. But it will be gunned down, and Ghana will get the chicken dinner in our second half. Well, that said, we finally have a South African winner here, Cloud. This should be it. This is a very exciting start. We've seen North African teams dominate in the first three maps. Algeria, Morocco, and Egypt had very good results. But this time around, it was... The Ghanaians that actually did find the win. South Africa had a very valiant attempt, but as you can see, it was just very clean to start to finish.
from the South African teams. GOAT had a very good performance, but it didn't carry their team far enough. Egypt had good amount of knocks, but just the top three teams clashing early on emptied the field and allowed the teams in the middle of the pack to actually get their wins. And what a map that wow. was. What a map that was. I mean, with the because it's there's a lot of open space and there's a lot of um, rotations happening as well from the teams. And hence why we see a lot of teams crashing onto each other as they rotate, they meet. And we did see the top one and number two team fighting at each other as well. So that was really exciting. This round is just packed full of action. Yeah, it was a great game. The question is though, Will South, will South Africa and Ghana be actually able to capitalize on this and create a momentum and try to go back and wrangle is no more for us today. We only have two maps left. And as you can see, teams like Maroides, teams like Ivory Coast, they've all had good finishes. A lot of these teams had a very rough game. And some of these teams maybe bit a, a bit off more than they could chew. Especially in the case of South Africa, they thirsted for that one kill on Hates and that came back to bite them as things ended up in a 4v2 and ultimately it was the numbers advantage that led to Ghana taking the win. And as you can see, like South Africa had a very good position, but they just couldn't close it out with that. Yeah, it was unfortunate that the circle ran away from them and they weren't prepared with the vehicles and all that. In terms of gunfight, we do see South Africa, they do have the qualities. Like how they took out, how they get that long range shot, long range knock on the spammer. It was just unfortunate there was so much open space for them and they didn't have enough covers for themselves to get the circle. So it was too bad for South Africa, but nevertheless, a second place finish. Is that as well? But for Ghana to get that chicken dinner, there is a possibility that they might be in the top three spots. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for our Irango maps today. After this, we're going to come back to a Mirama map. So do not go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back with the scores as well. See you then. Won't you say why you're stranger now? Your eyes escape from mine when I sit you down. Don't you feel like we're holding on? Onto a fairy tale, but the magic's gone.
Talking like you think you're royalty You think that I'm afraid But I don't break I heard you question my stability You think I'll fall just like a guillotine But I am here to stay Won't look away The storm is coming So you better start running
Welcome back guys, after the third and uh, fourth game, a uh, couple of things have changed, uh, not only the winners in the third game, it was uh, Algeria on the second spot, Egypt, and on the third, Ivory Coast, in the fourth game, uh, it was uh, Ghana on the first, uh, on the second was Martinius and the uh, third was Egypt. Uh, in the final spotting, it's uh, still Morocco on the first spot, Egypt in the second, but the third change, it, it's uh, no longer South Africa, but right now it is the Ghana. We still have uh, two more games coming in front of us, so let's see how this team will do it and uh, if also the spotting will kind of change after these two games. Our casters is ready, so let's get into the game number five. Ladies and gents, we are back. Halfway point. We got the Nrango and it was a big surprise. None of the top three even made it to the top three of the Nrango. All of them tried. There were trades back and forth between them, whether it was uh, Egypt taking down Algeria, then Morocco managing to find the, the wounded Egypt later on. But well, that ended up in the following scoreboard. Morocco and Egypt are now neck and neck, but Ghana moved all the way up to the third place with a very disappointing zero point game from algeria wow i mean uh, algeria they were at the top three from the start now it's the first time they've been booted top three but nevertheless we still have a lot more games to go so not going to discount anyone just yet. Uh, south africa the points not too far from algeria as well so they could leap from algeria after this next match and well with the point gap that uh, ghana has in algeria and south africa uh, so far the next game does look good unless they go out early and algeria comes up with a chicken dinner yeah and that's actually going to be a big question of whether or not people can handle the pressure because that's the only thing that's rattled about them now they've all seen the maps sure then rango was very different on map one to this one just due to the way that the flight path was and the ring was but now you actually do have the angle to just try to play standard PUBG, play with your rotations you know your hard spawns you know how to play the first two rings and to go from there and i feel like south africa has actually gained back a lot of ground and that is twofold that means that one you have to give a lot of props to the north african igls for the way that they panned the first in Rango. And that means that the fraggers on the South African end are no slouch what's for whatsoever. For the amount of fragging that they've done, they've managed to play around the map, utilizing the empty space that the top three have freed up, and they've made it work. South Africa had a very good position. Will they be able to replicate that? That's a very big question because they are dropping super early on. Uh, and the other day is about a uh, consistency. Yes, you can have a good one round, but you need to keep it up for to the end, because it doesn't matter what position you're at at the start. It matters what you're at at the end. So they need to keep up the consistency. Same goes for Algeria. Even though they've been uh, eliminated or taken out of the top three, but there's still more games to go. Hence, uh, by the end of tomorrow, we'll only be able to know who truly will represent the African region into the next stage of this tournament. Exactly. And, well, things has to go well for some of the teams. I feel like Egypt and Morocco, if they keep that level of form, they're almost a lock for the main event. They've been doing great in the qualifiers. And speaking of doing great, that is great work from South Africa, early limbs. And now they know that there's an engagement. Will they take the gambit? Because there is still one player on the minimap, as you can see there from Nigeria, that might want to take that engagement. But for now, that will not be the case. As Bob Bumps there and the rest of Mauritius are having a very safe time. And that was very unexpected. You usually expect teams to not risk looting common areas like that. That was not the case. And South Africa ended up in the winning and an early elimination. And now they have guaranteed points and they've scored one of the teams. Now Mauritius has the opportunity to score points as well as G is around. Or Djibouti could do the same on the Mauritius. But we have teams here. We got Senegal as well as Namibia in the same area. Namibia, they have a spread. And so they are surrounding Senegal. And again, actually, the second time around that they share the same area. And they seem to be in to take the fight. Yeah, the two teams not shying away from each other. But last time, Goat 
had the lead in that one. It was a very similar position. It feels like a deja vu. But might have they actually spotted red zone? That's the problem. Because if red zone is spotted, that's the kill given away for free. And now you can't contest much because you don't have that pincer to find the backstab, the dagger through the back of the team. But that is not the case. A lot of the teams are playing safe. And I'm assuming that this is all four from Egypt because I'm only seeing three on the minimap. Did they lose somebody early on as well? Mm, I don't assuming, think so. Yeah, I, I'm assuming that these are two players overlapping on top of each other. I think that's the case now. Now, looking at the circle, it's onto Los Lunas as a center oh, point. Right <laughs> okay, they're chasing Red Zone. Red Zone got to get away. Red is alone. The team da, is da, on da, the da. other side. <laughs> that's like killing the chase music because Red Zone is going to go out. The rest of the team are going to hold from them. And that means that Senegal will have to respect the hustle. And now Maroidus. Will they respect Djibouti? They're walking in. They don't spot oh. the player. Vortex, they should be given for free, but they will turn around and they get a kill off. No lightning will save you there. The Vortex, the storm, is too much to handle for Killwa. That is a beautiful dodge for the nade. And they are still fighting for it. Ring one is super neutral. All the teams still have a chance in this one. Stage three. And two will be the deciding factors of the rotations. But so far, teams are actually not shying away from early engagements. Oh, that was a nice flick move there. Not gonna lie. You gotta admire the moment. I mean, that is the clippable moment there. He almost got taken down though. But speaking about taking down, looks like we got a couple of missions elsewhere as well. Uh, Djibouti, so far they only lost one. And they're for the exit. They're like, nope. 3v4, not gonna be worth it. Let's just get out of here. Exactly, and looking at the ring, you can see that Morocco are in a beautiful position. Senkai is left as the scout against the other teams. Meanwhile, the rest of the team are just in that Chancera position. You can see that the crater is held by the team in El Pozo as the Algerians. And Egypt, all the way in the north, they are taking all the time in the world, and they might as well do so because a lot of the teams now are vying for that vehicle control and some of them is going to be easier than other the teams in the north it's not going to be easy they have to contest the vehicles we've seen teams that had to contest and lose one or two members just to gain that space to get that vehicle to try to rotate around the map and now it's going to be Ghana's turn to take a run for the hills you can see that egypt has a player all the way deep they can hear that they can hear everything walking around in the vehicles and that's going to be great for egypt because they have three of their members all the way down uh, also up north and they can go down and then have a trade against the rest of the members you can see Visha just playing the scout you can hear the moritonians walking their way into that complex vortex and paradox are gonna run through bum bum sir and disha still Having a good position, 11 teams are left in place. Only really stray picks for either end. And will somebody be able to break the deadlock? I'm assuming in the next two minutes, everybody's going to value their lives more. Because there are there are a lot of space that is uninhabited by players. Just looking at the way that the game goes. Ring 2 is going to close in. And it is choosing to be on the eastern side. Closer to that Vendita and Los Leones. But will the teams be able to make a move? Because actually one of the members of Egypt is still all the way up north. Egypt has not moved. Yeah, I guess they're playing the uh, late entry strategy, which is okay. In fact, the entire field there. So I think it's a deliberate strategy for them. And that's fine. Some teams refer to come a little bit later and we are inside of the we're still at the first phase of the circle so it's okay the damage isn't that great as long as they have enough utilities to heal themselves up that's fine yeah i agree i think it's pretty okay but i am looking at things and one of the things that i can see that is really unlike the patterns that we've seen is that algeria is also one of the teams that are playing late entry which is not their style you've seen them cloud i've seen them and i'm pretty sure the viewers have seen them playing super early, getting their control, getting the high ground, and then trying to play from there. 
this time around, they, they are selecting to be the second team in, not the first one. That will change a lot of dynamics. As you can see, that Senegal are still on the hills in Namibia. Saltitude and Itachi are trying to escape to the west. Samurai can hear them. Will alert the rest of the team. You can see that they are aware something might happen. And Samurai is in a good position. They might spot one of the, one or two of these. As they spot Saltitude. And now there might be a big fight. Utility is coming in. Samurai in a tough position. They have to make work with the nades. Will the nade be enough? It will knock one of them down. Trying to find a 1v2. Even secure the knock. But that will not be the case now. Time is running out on the members in Namibia. Trying to find a kill. But no, Samurai will slice the two of them off. And that will be it. Blade is sheathed. But with it, the blood of two members drawn by the Senegali team. Well, now Namibia still wants to go in. They seem to be interested to get the trade. Are they going to do it? Okay, they are in the circle. They are in a good spot right now, but two v four. I don't know if that's going to be a good. Is that if that's going to be a good move? The circle looks like Picado is still in it, and we still have a good number of teams in the blue. But inside a Picado fight, because they still have the circle, could be a Mexican standoff. I don't think so. I think that the the team with only two, they will be hunted down. And they are actually being hunted. And that's going to be a big problem because Egypt is walking in. And right next to them are Mauritania and South Africa who are taking a bit more of the eastern route towards Minas Generalis there. Going perhaps for Lavendita, which is a position that will be hard fought. Morocco already have a good position. So does Algeria. Finally walking in with the vehicles. Situation is not easy. And you can see Knox. On the left side, that's goat out of the equation. And well, a lot of space is controlled by the two North African teams. Algeria are definitely trying to make up and Morocco are trying to make sure that they are not letting up the pressure. They need to get as many points today. And I feel like if Morocco gets 30 more points, they're almost guaranteed to make it in the main events just for the last two maps. Yeah, they are doing really, really well right now. And they have opened up a significant gap between them and that number four team. As long as they don't drop out of the top, absolutely fine. So the target is just to stay away from their number one, number four spot. And now speaking about staying away, I wonder when will the Picado fight end? Well, they're locked inside of Picado, those two teams. Whereas the other teams, they're starting to move into the circle. So might be a place of contention. Might be. You can see a lot of teams are around Picado. They might be making a move towards the center of the map. That might be a big problem because you can see Mauritanius. They've taken a good position here. Abandoning their vehicles. But will they be able to hold it? That's the case. You can see Morocco is super close. Morocco walking in with the vehicles. And it might be again the two North African teams colliding. But for now... Looks like Algeria will actually decide, you know, we can take our time. We can play late. South Africa trying to scout there with Rever. But that's too close to the Egyptians. We've seen them punish vehicles. They have great sprays. And Rever is trying to hold the flank. But they are not aware of the Egyptian position. And Morocco now are taking a fight. It's almost a four-man fight here. Two teams, three teams even with Egypt being pretty close. But Lazy Boy will be taken care of by Mauritania's Vortex. Things are looking pretty good for Mauritania here. Holding strong. And Morocco are not able to break the deadlock. It looks like Morocco. They can't find an answer back. And looks like Mauritius. They have control of this high ground. For Morocco. Fortunately, they will lose Lazy Boy. But Mohammed from Egypt. Shot down by Paradox. Long range. But then again, no one's there to follow up. But the rest of Egypt, they're here to this area. Again, goes up to the high ground, backs off. Paradox has a nade, tosses it on. To win. Again, gets away. Again, actually getting closer and closer towards Paradox. Paradox now in trouble. He's pushed down to the ground. Paradox goes up to the high ground. He switches to NM4. And the flag got to again. Beautifully done by Paradox. They're doubling up on again. And now the situation is hard. They managed to recover the player from Egypt. But the half needs to find a kill. And they will. Big damage onto again though. Bum bum sir. Might just take the bum bum shots. To the remaining members of Hap and Disha. Playing from pretty far behind. Again with very little support. 
Nate's back and forth. You can see Molotovs and everything raining. 35 players left, 10 teams, and each of them are trying to make sure that they will not be the 10th. Vortex continuing to fight. They'll have to find one. Marshmallow now capitalizing is doubling up from the two teams of Morocco are being hurt as well. It's a three-team fight. Morocco are trying to wrap it up, but they'll have will get the knock and will probably get the elimination. Carry boy will get rid of that one. They'll have to get in bum bum sir. Carry boy now. Get in paradox. And Morocco and Egypt are going at it. Oh, Morocco, Egypt, the number one, number two team again for the time. They're fighting against each other. But now at least there's a little bit of a gap for two teams. So it's going to be a long range trade between them two. But it seems like Egypt needs to be backing out. But Algeria is below them. Okay, right now the still has Picado. And looks like the two teams inside Picado went out. But one of them need to come in. Most of this team's currently in the circle. Yeah, a lot of the teams though on the edges. Whether it be South Africa, Ivory Coast. Or the teams on the eastern side things are not looking easy south africa has an idea of where the ivorians are will they be able to take them though for now does not look to be the case and a team from Cote d'Ivoire will have one more game to play for and algeria they've actually kept themselves there south picado and Egypt are trying to move back to the edge of the ring. Vehicles inbound. But really, it's a very hard angle to play. Like There are three teams on the edges. You have Morocco in the center. So where to go now from Egypt? Do you think that Egypt will even be able to sustain or will they be eventually sandwiched by player and the rest of the Ghanaian team? I'm looking at this right now. They will close. It's, will Picado still be in it? And that will be big as we got like three teams around the areas of Picado. But it looks like the circle has to wait as player one to Egypt on the other side. Ghana wants to take advantage of it, but Ghana does not have the circle. They need to move. Same goes for Morocco. But Morocco, okay. Morocco is in the circle, so they're kind of okay. It's just that they're playing the rest of the round with only three players. They're finding cover. Hello, looting. Waiting for the next siege in case any team comes by. But speaking of coming by, Nigeria, Roach, all alone this area. And the team's a pro game. And here we go. Shots fired by Roach. Can he actually get it? The people is protecting his opponent and Roach will go down. And yeah, that's one player down. Well, that's opponent to go to in Ghana. They're basking in blood. Trying to secure their spot in the top three. And you can see now the ring here. Sir Cloud is blowing towards South Picado and Picado as a whole. Situation is not easy. Nobody has high ground. And the two teams are fighting. Raouf will just farm one. Algeria in a very good position. Raouf will be taking a blunt of damage. But well, the rest of Algeria will manage to wrap up kills. There are still only three members. But they at least managed to get an elimination. So it will not only be the placement. They have some score to add to it. At least they have something so far because they need to catch up onto the top three again. And the fact that Ghana is still in this, is, they definitely need the points to catch up to Ghana at least. But now we have Egypt and Morocco. They're still not letting go of each other. Egypt playing on the other side of the circle. And Egypt still needs to come in. They have a lot of members still on the outside though. But it should be okay as they have won. And as a marker, at the same time, Spamma will be knocked down. And in, I think we'll be coming to the circle. They should be on a clear. Well, they're trying to scout for Egypt. But they haven't given themselves that space. And now you can see the situation is hard. Morocco's holding the angle. But Ghana will make sure to get through. Now they're walking in. They made use of the reload. And Morocco are being pressured. Ghana are splitting themselves in a 2-2 split. Carry Boy will spot the two on the left. That means that they are aware of the positioning, but not a lot of resources are left for Ghana. And as you can see, Ring 4 absolutely hurts. And Spama will be taking the final bullet by Carry Boy to be taken out of that equation. Ivory Coast might be aware of Egypt, but Egypt will take the first bullet. And Genia is being brought pretty low. One of their members are even down Egypt now, trying to find more kills. 
trying to find more points because they're only on two eliminations. And Ivory Coast are looking rather tasty there. Deja trying to be the scout, trying to take the first shot and maybe get something for their team because for now, I think that the top four teams or even the top five that you're seeing on the bottom right corner, none of them have sufficient eliminations. None of them have good scores for this one. So it's down to these nine last teams to try to farm scores, especially with the ring. This stuff onto everybody is going to even go further and further towards Mikado. I think this is good for South Africa. This is good for Algeria. And Morocco might be making the daring rotation towards the south. Mm, and if it goes inside of Picado, meaning that we might expect a Mexican soft, it will be a little bit slower in case if it's a urban warfare. But Nafi, he does see the incoming Ghanaians coming in. The two of them on the outside. Nafi waiting for the right moment. He has an M4 in hand. No extended back though. It's all alone. He might be trigger discipline this time. Let's see what happens. And Muhammad gets knocked. Ghana still needs to find their way into the circle. Muhammad gets eliminated. Deisha gets knocked down as well. Deisha eliminated. What's happening with Egypt? I don't know. They tried. Certainly they tried, but they have not found the angle. Algeria as well, not in an easy position. You can see teams are slowly starting to walk in. Egypt are only down to Del Hap. But will Del Hap be able to find a response? So far, does not look to be the case. Ghana and Nigeria are taking a fight. Feed me. It's looking for more. And they might find Snuffy. Charles back and forth, but Snuffy will win that one. That would be a big kill for the side of Nigeria. Big elimination. You can see South Africa now are trying to route out on Joker. Always one of the few members that are pretty good on these dark positions. Will Joker be able to stay alive? Nate is good, trying to find damage, but no knock is good damage though. And you can see that the damage is spread towards the two teams, South Africa and Ivory Coast are trying to find the duel. But Griff to heal themselves back to full Sully as well. And Potato is holding the flank angle smoke to maybe allow some of the members to pass. They're trying to play for the Nate. Potato will dodge that one. A lot of nades are walking in, and speaking of nades, Carrier Boy will take player one with one of these. Sully, Griff, and Potato are all in a tough position. They are trying to find an answer, but it's a stalemate between the two teams. Oh, there's a fight here, 1v1. Let's go, who will win this fight? UMP will be shut out, and that's gonna be Djibouti winning the fight. Beautiful, and it 1v1 is given to them, and now we're back onto Picado. The teams are in this. Ivory Coats at the edge. But we can see as well that South Africa is leaving the Kong. They're going to find somewhere safer to be at. While Algeria is keeping out of the Ivory Coast. In Ivory Coast comes out of the compound. Algeria will then shoot them down. Yeah, Algeria. Just sneaking a few kills. Sneaking a few knocks. And that might be enough. Morocco as well trying to do the same. But Senke not finding the same degree of success. They've made their move towards the south. And now, they will have to try to fight their way out of it. Because you can see teams on all sides of the ring. Whether it's Ghana in the middle, Algeria on the right, Djibouti on their left. It's not looking too good for them. South Africa in the heart of the ring. And Morocco are the ones that have to walk in. It will be them and Djibouti have to do so. Algeria taking control of some of the complexes, but the problem for South Africa is that they have not gotten rid of the Ivorian problem that are still knocking on their door. Now the circle does go towards Picado. So the four teams is that oh, they're holding onto each edge of Picado, it seems. So that means that who want to come in, they're going to have a hard time. They got to pick their poison, basically. Which do they want to meet to get into the circle? Not like they know, but if they have the information, I mean, they would know that every corner has a team by itself. Exactly. Every team is trying to find that safe haven to have a corner that both benefits them and actually gives them the space to do damage to inflict some harm. Morocco, though, are skipping corners, running straight into the Algerians. It's a meeting between cousins, it's a meeting between neighbors. 
and they are trying to find the best out of this one, but no, Morocco clearing the building, doing excellent work, the nade might not be enough, and Raouf oh. trying to find a kill, the nade from Iron will take Marshmallow down, that opens up space for Raouf to find a trade, they are still trying to find Marshmallow, but Marshmallow are hiding in. Securing that elimination before Carrier Boy comes in. Will they save the day? Raouf was out of bullets. Has to reload. And now Carrier Boy very low. Trades oh. back and forth. Carrier Boy will be brought down. But Senke and Marshmallow will take them down. And Morocco to move into the top five. Oh, there wasn't much for Ralph to handle all alone now. The long range coming for Samurai. Samurai with the kid and boy tries to get it onto Isco. Isco skits away. Isco is still alive. While Madara is behind. But Isco is not a clear yet. He parks himself into the shack. Madara is still outside. Samurai knows that Madara is there. He will be scoping onto Madara. Okay, there you Madara. Using the hills, using the cliff to try to get into safety. Madara, vehicles up. He's praying for his life. Hopefully, you'll be able to get into safety. Oh. Madara, not location. Madara needs to run away. Some fire. And Madara will break it down to try to use it as cover. But the hail of bullets might be too much. The smoke might be sprayed down and it will not be the case because Joker will get them while they are prone in Ivory Coast. They've managed to find some good kills. South Africa still holding to the Reds. These two buildings are difficult to clear. They are still holding good angle. Madara and Isco in the sidelines. But they are on the sidelines of almost everyone. And five teams are left and Joker will continue farming on Madara. Madara eliminated. I mean, he was out in the open. There wasn't much that he can do. He was on the outside as well. So it's either taken by a team or he'll be giving himself to the blue. But anyway, now the zone will close. Marshmallow will be shot at. The zone will move. Who favor by the zone? And it looks like it goes again towards the city of Picado. Continuing, try to find space. Zone is good for Morocco. We've seen them do good as a team, but they'll need to continue doing so. Marshmallow smoking off the angle, trying to play it off, but you can see that there is a player behind the Moroccan team trying to make as much space and time as possible, trying to get themselves into the top three position. And Morocco is too busy setting themselves up against everybody else. Ivory Coast, South Africa, and Ghana, all of them are not having the best of times. Meanwhile, Isco trying to find the rotation, getting the best high ground possible against the two teams. But will they be able to capitalize so far? Looks like it's going to be hard because everyone knows that that's a strangled solo player and they are trying to farm that one. How is Isco going to get out of this? He's still on the outside though. When he chose himself down there, Morocco is going to shoot at him. He's going to expose himself to Morocco and now shot. I guess Morocco would have heard it, and Morocco now will pay attention onto him. Well, the other teams inside of Picado City, it should be a okay for them. Not too sure about Irish uh, position though. I think they are in the circle. Yes, they are. Now Isco makes a rotation, but where is he going? Because every corner of Picado has a team. Yeah, but they might find the space necessary. That rock could have been enough, but no, Joker again is always Joker for Ivory Coast. That three limbs for Joker. Trying to find more Senkai carry boy are in the sidelines. Now it's a difficult Mexican standoff. Four teams are alive. Joker is still trying to find more. They've been doing great job from that window. But will it be enough? Will Morocco get back to their winning ways? The first place team cementing their spot in the top four at the very least. It's going to be a very tough fight. 15 seconds. Our remaining, once the next ring shows up, it's do or die time for everyone involved. Oh yeah, the next will prove crucial for these teams. Who will we favor by the zone? And the zone right close. Looks like it goes to the center, but we still have a team that's on the outside circle. Like, if you can't think about it, two or maybe three teams on the outside circle. There's one team in it, and that's going to be Morocco. So they have control of the circle. They have compounds, and they are on the other side of the road. Right now, it's pretty much theirs for dinner, unless they drop the ball. Well, they haven't been dropping the ball. They got it in a limb right there, and they're continuing to rain damage. 
and the rest of the teams have to make some work. Senkai by the burn down vehicle. Trying to find a shot that might break the side of Ivory Coast. You can see all of them are low in HPs. Probably out of regions, out of energy drinks, out of anything. And the HP situation and the economy of the healing tools will be a very big fork for the teams. Right now, Senkai is trying to find the kills. Players are pretty low. Carry Boy will find that one. Will they guarantee the knock? Marshmallow's in a great position. They spot Joker, and Joker is down. Morocco are farming these kills. Eight for Morocco, and should even be more, just by getting rid of the remaining players. South Africa, they're trying to steal some of these kills. But that has not been the case, and Morocco continuing to dominate. Where the zone starts to eat its to eat whoever who's in it and he managed to get one and now Senkai tries to land the shot all ones in his crosshair the zone will continue to close stage nine the zone will close entirely so everyone's in it but the next stage is going to be really hard especially for the teams on the side and that's where Morocco will have the advantage of waiting for them to come towards them exactly Morocco has the building has the complex they've gotten everything top floor is controlled South Africa has to walk in. The problem is nobody's at the center of the map. So the final ring here in stage nine is going to be hard on everybody, but the setup is definitely there by Morocco. Will they be able to do it? Will they be able to change that L-shaped building that they are in into a W for their own team? Ghana's the only team. Sorry, that's actually Senegal. The only team with four members. Will they be able to do something with it? Samurai has been playing pretty well. They're trying to nail South Africa out. That might be it for Griff. Griff now jumping, trying to escape the ring. Will definitely do a lot of harm. No, not the correct choice for Senegal. They're trying to find a kill, but that Ooh. will not be the case. South Africa to wrap up one, but now Morocco is in the prime position while the two teams are fighting. Morocco are getting ready to capitalize, to finalize, or will it be South Africa? Doctor is trying to escape. Doctor staying by the byline, taking a lot of damage, even being burned, but no, the heal will be there. Senegal trying to find an angle. Every boy will be taken off. That's the big one for Senegal. They might be finding their space back. Four players remaining between two teams, but that will be it. Morocco for another win. Oh, that is it. That is it. Beautifully done. Nicely done indeed. Morocco got the chicken dinner and they were in a good position. They were on the other side. They were unchallenged. There were no other teams to challenge them. At the moment the fight ends, they, they finish up the job. Third party comes in. They not only got it, but they got a couple of elimination points in the process. Exactly. And I feel like it all started from that stage four or five rotation when they made their rotation to the south. They've gotten themselves to control the Miramar. And once they've gotten themselves set up, just as he said, they were not contested. And I've seen that. South Picado was all theirs. They sat all the way down, and it was pretty hard. And I feel like it was that, that fight that you are seeing right here on the replay in Stage 3, where it was Moroides, then it was Egypt, then it was Morocco. Teams fighting left, right, and center. You can see Egypt had the initiative to take the fight. And Moroides managed to play the maiden switch pretty well. Forcing Egypt off and eventually Egypt got whittled down in numbers and they were out of the game. And Morocco, once again, persevering, just dodging enemies while also taking favorable duels. Getting themselves one more win in today's matchup. Almost securing their place in the finals, in the main event. Uh, and this is one of the uh, mid-stage This was a beautiful one. 1v1, Feed Me lost this fight. If he fight, he would have won his entry into the circle, but unfortunately that had to happen. But this is a beautiful one. Just look at this 1v1. Nicely done by Jibodi as they won right. And they managed to go up another rank. But the siege down, wow. Morocco, the moment they siege down this compound, they took it away from Algeria. And that is how they got the chicken dinner at the end. If only Algeria managed to defend this area, this compound, the chicken dinner would have been theirs. Exactly. Again, you got to hand it to Morocco. They play these building takes so well. 
they know how to trade each other. They know how to situate each other around buildings to make sure that one, they're covering for their teammates. Two, they're taking the trades. Three, they're not allowing other teams to third party them. And I feel like that is the signal of a very strong team. They know when to fight when third parties are hard. And as you can see in the replays, it was just a matter of time before Senegal and South Africa took the fight. Morocco were in the best position and they kept closing in. Senkai right there on the left, leaving the other two members on the right, just making sure that there was no place to go for the other team. South Africa just died from trying to take the cross and eventually it was it. Carry boy, not taken out in the push. So that was good from Senegal. So the attempt was valiant, but it was just not enough. Morocco is too good of a team. Yeah, that's why they are at the number one. So, yeah, I guess so So far so good. So for them, they are still strong this tournament. But nevertheless, ladies and gentlemen, we still have one more map to go today. That will be inside of Sanor, the smallest map. But do not go anywhere. We'll be taking a little bit of there, and we'll be seeing you after this break. Thank you. 
Man, cynical. Yeah, I guess I am. I think I'd like to stay this way though if I can. Just keep holding my pace through impossible days. The void keeps calling my name. It's the only What what a series! What a day! Like that's all I'll have to say. Like it it was very powerful to see Morocco being able to wrap up another win in that fashion. They really surprised me by the way that they played, the way that they have approached the game, the way they approached the map, and well, the standing reflects how immaculate their play has been. Eighty one points with a very big difference in the second place. But there is a very interesting fight happening, Cloud. You can see from Egypt all the way to maybe even Senegal and Djibouti, like everybody else in that bottom spot have a chance. And maybe if they start well today on this very last map, tomorrow could be their chance to qualify. Well, yeah, so as we can see, the situation has been going pretty well for the side of Morocco. 81 points. They managed to wrap up 23 from that matchup. 
and neither Egypt nor Ghana had a very big say. Neither does Algeria. South Africa hasn't leapfrogged them just yet, but they've equalized. So, Cloud, mm -hmm. I hope you're back with us. Welcome back. So, how do you feel about that fight? Because I feel like Morocco are almost locked in for the event. And the question now has become, who will the other two teams be? Well, uh, I mean, we're not even done with day one. Um, if they can, but then again, if they can gather this amount of points, um, not going to be something they go through. Who are the other teams? It's still hard to tell because uh, teams have been switched, especially when Algeria, they were at number three, and then they slowly slide down number five. So I don't know if they'll be able to really come back up, but of course, I'm not that far, so there's still that opportunity. But let's check out what happens in this round. Our final for today is going to happen inside of San Hot. The flight path will be on the northern side this time. Mount Cam Alpha. Yeah, the landing is not going to be easy, but a lot of teams, especially with how small the map is, can be able to spread their wings and go all the way down. You can even see it from the Ivorian team. They go all the way south. Meanwhile, South Africa are in a bit of a hot landing, as you can see. They are going to have to fight with Djibouti. But the rest of the teams have spread themselves quite well. It's only a place that is super on the edge, like Docks or Sami, are the places that are not frequented by the teams. But everybody else, they have their say. And South Africa and Djibouti might actually have an early altercation. But despite that, the altercation actually happens at the opposite end because Egypt, they are losing members. Go take down two. I believe that's the fight inside of boot camp because there were two teams that dropped inside of there as well. So boot camp and Paradise Resort will now be the focus. And you have a visual on the boot camp. Egypt unfortunately lost one player very early on. And uh, could that mean that this round is not their round? Don't know yet. As three players, you could still do a lot of things. So Egypt could still come up top, but it's a challenge definitely if you lose one player early. Another fight between South Africa here going up against another opponent on the other side this fight is still exit through the back but both teams seems to be interested to take this fight well they're not shying away they know how important elimination points are and they have the nays they have the read but the damage is not enough matter on managed to escape through matter will actually take a good bit of damage from the player up the stairs they're playing very intricate angles and Morocco might be the team to benefit. You can see Lazy Boy doing excellent scouting yet again. Hearing the bullets, hearing a lot of the steps. Might even find a freebie on Rever, who's doing nothing but hold the flank angle. And that will be a very good freebie for Morocco. But for now, they're just silently observing the fight as happening. And they're just waiting for them to make the first move. So after the first Maybe they'll come in as a third party, but at the same time, they need to know that this area is in the circle, so this fight will still need to end. So here we go, Djibouti is still keeping the potato on the other side. Kilwa will be the representative at the forefront, the nade will be cooked up, but Kilwa decides not to go in for it. Ooh, that staggered nade blind at him, couple of shots, and now he's back, he recovered. Flying like a bat, but the South Africans will not take that attack taking their time. The nades are still trying to find the fact that that would not be the case. Egypt still trying to take the fight. Goat is already 1-2. They've taken one down. They've rest one of them back up. Will they be able to find success again? Very aggressive on the forefront. Goat draw pretty low. Waiting for them to hit the room, but that will not be the case again. Might want to storm this. Two players on their corner. Shotgun will be good for the mission, but shots are necessary to be found. Sotitude and Goat still doing good work. They're spotting them down, cooking the nade. Will it be enough? Ooh. That will be it. Sotitude is down. Goat as well is down by the second nade. And Egypt with a beautiful one two play managed to recover themselves. They say three might do the job. And for them, three is enough to take these members down. Two of them points for Egypt. And they managed to regain control of the zone. Oh, and he used the new machete skin for P to get that elimination. That's how you do it in style, my friend. And we're back onto Paradise Resort. South Africa is not done yet here. It's going up against Djibouti. And Djibouti exiting, but Morocco waiting for Djibouti. 
And look at that position. Look at Morocco. They're waiting for the exit. They're waiting for the fight. And now they will capitalize. Marshmallow will get one. This goes out of the round. And Lazy Boy trying to circle back, trying to find an answer. But Kilwa will actually find Marshmallow. The problem is now he might be fighting the two teams because the two teams are trying to find Morocco. But Morocco are not scared. Morocco are taking the duels. And Morocco are winning these. Carry Boy with a knock. Carry Boy with a confirmation. Will they spot the players to the right? Because that might be their problem. Djibouti might win this. But no, Lazy Boy with a shotgun does enough work gets the kills and now south africa might be too scared to take the fight you can see potato and griff are holding the side angle and that will actually be suma taking care of that senkai out as well that's the problem for morocco the team that has had a very good game for throughout the first five maps now they're only down to one player left alive is lazy boy but griff will save lazy boy by taking down suma for the time being south africa trying to take our champions for day number one will their journey and in, in the top 10 at least they've secured that much three elimination points but not the best score line so far oh and the circle is going to be a trick as well it could probably be cam alfar island again but now putting focus to morocco lazy boy the last man standing for them can lazy pop out of clutch but unfortunately the low ground will not give him the, the advantage as south africa will fight and out of the three teams, South Africa survives with a full squad. Yeah, that's a very difficult loss for Morocco. I think that their tally will probably stop at 85 to 90 points. They've managed to get themselves a good score. They've managed to get themselves back into this one, South Africa. Winning the duels, just utilizing Morocco's aggressiveness. In that spot and you know one of the teams that has not been aggressive this time is algeria again trying to make a move hopefully this time though they will find success again because more often than not feels like they put themselves in a position to succeed but they don't do it and now moroidus they are trying to hold the package the package that egypt is close to egypt is actually trying to move away from that position you can see again clearing the houses Trying to get some loot. There are three players alive, and three might be enough given the current landscape of the teams. Egypt. Now on the other side of the map, we have Algeria coming in. So the last time we saw Algeria in the Sahara, they they went all the way up onto Camp Alpha Mountain. We can just one team is our Camp Alpha Mountain, but for the rest of Algeria, they're still on the island. And there's another team behind them, so there could be a clash as they try to get across. Exactly, you can see teams on the west and a team on the mountain. But the zone does not favor either. A zone actually has a lot of unplayable space. So the, the, the space is certainly deceptively small for the players. A lot of it will be the water next to Camp Alpha. And now you can just see even Boot Camp is not included. But there is space among all three islands that you can play upon for this stage, at least. South Africa still taking their time, still at the resort, trying to make sure that they will rotate uncontested. That might be the case because you can see in Hatin, players are moving towards there. And Egypt still looting, but the problem is that they might have taken too long. The other teams might have taken the good positions because the hills has been taken and the hills will be useful when players are rotating for the next stage. Yeah, because the Soko did move, so they will force players to really, really move fast. And plus the Soko, like what you said, there's a lot of unplayable land. It's about maybe like 30% unplayable land, meaning that about 6% of land that's playable, so teams would crash into each other earlier on. Still a guess whether the Soko will go down to the ruins island area or we go up alpha so it's still 50 50. again it's a flip of coin that the teams need to do certainly the teams need to find something and sanity maybe having some connection issues the cars can sometimes be deceptively hard to handle but in this spot it will be nigeria holding the upper ground and it's ghana and senegal Close by, Senegal will be the first face. And then Ghana behind them. Will they be able to find success? Because you can see two teams are trying to hold that angle. Egypt to the left. And Nigeria to the right. 
It's a very tough position. As we said, teams will clash into each other. But they have some time to set up Algeria as well. Have the time and space to make the move. They're making sure to break the bars. Making their escape hard. But now Egypt's position is known. Muhammad is not in that good of a position. And the rest of the team tried to pounce upon them. But the Hap is holding the angle. You can see that behind them, teams are holding the higher ground. Nigeria are pretty close. Will the Hap be spotted? That's the big question. All right, now this could be a fight here as the drive happens. All right, the team's on the other side though. But looking at the circle, okay, the team's still spending time in the blue. But the rest of them, they are in the circle. But the tricky part will be the next stage. Will it pull up? Will it pull down? I think that will be the biggest thing. But now, at the same compound as the Egyptians, there's one player just at the corner. The Egyptians still don't know. The Egyptians still looking for it. Might be a problem. The Hap has to find the angle, has not heard the player. Has taken some shots though from the Nigerian behind the woods. And now the Hap is bounced upon. The player will not be able to get there in time. Trying to get the angle. The Hap with a shotgun will just waste some time. And Rose will not be able to find a kill. Trace White coming in from Muhammad and that will Man. be it. Now the pushes are continuing from Nigeria. Will they be able to get it? Egypt are holding it down strong. Taken down two. The player on the right side brought down low. Brought down to their knees. And Egypt will win three out of these four duels. Only one of the players left but Namibia are trying to steal some of their thunder, are trying to capitalize on the fight, playing from the hills, but that will not be the case. You can see the Senegal are trying to find an angle, but they'll have what a headshot! All the way downtown, the headshot did connect, but because it's far, so he could be picked up by his teammates. Now, Senegal, we're approaching this compound. Egypt is still there. Samurai will be at the forefront. Samurai will get closest to the enemy. Now, Samurai, he has a couple of nasal Yali as well, so he can use it to flush them out. Will they be able to do so, though? That's the big question, because Egypt, they've succeeded once with the lesser manpower. But this time, again, way too much in the open. You can see the Samurai are walking in. Senegal are in a great position. Will they spot again? We will elect not to pull the trigger this time. But certainly not an easy place to be for Egypt. Samurai, readying to fight for honor, readying to fight for Senegal's chances in this one, and again just brought down like a shadow in the night, they will strike, and now the light has to be coming in from Egyptians, will they be able to conjure the power brought to light them out through the darkness, looks like that will not be the case, Senegal clearing down two, it's only down to the last member alive, and they'll happily be brought Ooh. down, they'll happily be shot off, and that is it for Egypt. Egypt will be out. And Senegal will clear that position. But that doesn't mean that the fight will end. Fights are still continuing. Teams are continuing to fight on that area. Oh, they need to reset quickly. As Senegal need to defend their ground. The shots fired out by UG Boy. It does connect, but he can't knock down Paradox yet. And Paradox will reset. Tornado! At the same time, Potato knocked down somewhere else. Nade after Nade after Nade! That should be on the southern side, just next to Ruins! The three Nade kills from Algeria, and now they're finalizing their kills, but that doesn't matter, because on this side, Senegal are finding their shots. Actually, again, it's still there for Egypt. So Egypt still has a representative in this one. Definitely out of numbers, though, but hearing everybody fighting, they might have a chance. Will they? That's a big question because Senegal is still holding the angle, but they'll be pushed. Two players taken out of the equation. Senegal now might be out of it because Egypt will finally strike. Kills last round in center and Mauritius will be able to capitalize. But Egypt will not go out empty-handed. Again, finding a kill for, for him. And I assume that's going to be more than four for the team as a whole. Trying to find an eight kill. Trying to play by the door. Utility might be the name of the game now. We've seen too many eight kills. Will they be able to add to the tally? Seven teams left. Again, all alone. Seven eliminations for Egypt, though. That is a good number for them in that place. Oh, he, again, he evaded the name. But now we're putting focus on to this outer side just next to Ruins. Looks like it's going to be Ivory Coast against Algeria. The long range coming to NATO. It will not connect to his opponents. 
They gotta get out of this fast because 30 minutes is over close. Ralph is in the vehicle. He's prepping himself for the next phase, for the next. This fight at the bridge will be inevitable. They have to take it, but the problem is, Aroides, they might have to take another fight as you can see that Djibouti are not into this one. And Egypt, last member standing again, will take the vehicle. Still though, Ivory Coast have to fend off Algeria from one end, but will the other end of the bridge be a problem for them? Algeria now moving in with the vehicles, running in with the storm. Will they be able to storm the Ivory Coast? That would be the question on the precipice, on the precipice of victory are Algeria. And they have a great position. They're locking them out, but Raouf will be taken oh. off. That's a good shot from Singo. Will they be able to finalize Tornado out as well? And for the third time today, Algeria put themselves in a prime position, but they are only primed to be taken down. Ivory Coast will win that one. We'll be in the top system again. Again, again, is still alive in this one. Trying to take things though, putting himself in the ring and maybe even finding a couple of kills there. Ooh, long range here again. He sees Nell on the other side. But because he's all alone, I'm not sure pulled the trigger. Oh, he might want to try this since it's a long range. Crazy will be needed. And now the circle, look at this. Okay, Skyro is still on the southern side. He had a cross, but he has his teammates as a marker. He should be all right. He's probably gathering loot there. Stay moving on the stage five is definitely going to be painful for whoever who's tanking the blue. Yeah, but there's a problem here, Cloud. One team is unlike everyone else. One team has all four members, and that is Ivory Coast. Well, actually, that's Ghana. That's not Ivory Coast. Ghana has four members. Situation is not easy for the rest of the team. Again, is spotted on the tower. And they are waiting. You can see that they are planning their entry on the Soul Egyptian. And it's not looking easy for any of these one or two member teams. Only five teams left in play. Again, holding for dear life. We'll jump down. But will it be just jumping down to let the remaining members take that kill? Top five means that Egypt will get good enough points. But the win is what everyone is playing here for. Maybe we are still on the outside of the soul, but 140 meters. But they are being spotted. But again, again, okay. Again, just waiting for them to come up. The moment they show themselves, again, we're not. And they will, because the blue will put pressure onto them. Red zone as Fernity. There are only two down there. Now we have Ghana. They are pretty much on the clear for compound as well to work with. So they should be all right. Most of the other teams on the other side, in fact. Yeah, it's only just, again, trying to lock it down. Two teams with four members. And the other three teams are down in numbers again, realizing the vehicle has been sabotaged by Nell. Nell trying to sabotage against life, but that will not be the case. Shots are not landing. Again, hiding by the tree line. We'll have to walk into Stanley in red zone though. It looks like they might get the better of red zone. The blue zone might be better than the red one. Again, pressured back into this. Trying to find shots is now. The spray down will not be good. Again, it's still alive, but probably very low on resources. And you can see pressured by everyone on the map. We've seen that situation before. Last time, it was South Africa trying to pressure the solo player. And that led to their demise. This time around, the two teams with full members are playing it to the safest extent possible. Red Zone trying to get rid of again. On very low HP and the ring is still moving. Again, might find that kill trying to play behind the rock while balancing their HP. It's a difficult balancing act and the scales will tip into one of these two teams' favor because you can see Ivory Coast with three players trying to find an angle. And now... Egypt will take down Sanity and Red Zone will be taken to the play zone. So that means Egypt is in the top four. And they are out. Nambia is out. It... Mm, but Egypt is still this again on the other side. Now Ghana, look at the spread of Ghana. My goodness. They're having good control of the circle right now. In fact, Phoebe knows that again is 
There's going to be bomb bombs just securing the elimination onto them. That means Egypt is out. Now down to the top three teams. Three teams left. Ivory Coast with three players out of those nine. And the other teams, if more just with two. And then Ghana with the remaining four. So numbers are not balanced between the three teams. But which of these will be able to pull something out of it? Player one is holding a good angle, but the problem is the hill is going to be a very hard battle. Ghana has a good position on the inner side of the ring. You can see Nell just holding the upper corner and bum ups there. And Paradox will finally have to move. Would it be Ivory still or would it be Ghana's? That's the big question because the two teams are hungering for these kills. You can see Nell trying to find the angle, but the tree line is just too difficult. We're talking about Miramar lacks of vegetation. Well, a lot of vegetation on this map, and Spamma will use this one to get Paradox out of the equation. Oh, fuck. I still has good control of the circle. Look at the spread. Boom Boom Servo with a Joker. Looks like we, uh, the eliminations are starting to roll. At the same time, Ghana spots out. I, I was on the other side. Feed me. Long range shots onto the player ones actually at the forefront. Player one might be the one to start the fight. Now feed me, still giving cover to his teammates. The circle still favors towards Ghana as they have the circle and they also have the clown. Player one, even if he pulls back, it will be fine. He'll just need to wait for the opponents to put him. Exactly, Ivory Coast has to make a move. Ring will sting for a fair bit. The ring is in a very exposed position for the side of Ivory Coast. They have to take the rocks, but their problem is. The rocks will be thrown at them from the side of Ghana. At least it's just a knock. They will be revived. But that might pressure a push. You can see they're walking in from Ghana. They will take the shots down. And they will take them all down. And Ghana will be the victor for the very last game. Putting themselves on the map. Putting themselves forward. And I think that this actually might be enough to put them in the top three for the end of the day. Yeah, Ghana is already in the top three. I think with this chicken, they might be even in the top two. Wow, it's a good uh, round. Ghana, as they end the day with a chicken dinner, and you always want to end the day with a chicken dinner, and you got to go to bed feeling good. Exactly, the victory there will keep them sated. And speaking of sated, maybe the hunger was the downfall of some of these teams. You can see Egypt and Morocco taking early fights and that only led to third parties and they were not able to fend them off you can see them right there sanity and red zone survived till the end and that was just the play that destroyed egypt's four chances unfortunately again did not close the door and that means it was an open free shot for samurai and from there it was just very hard for anybody else with senegal to take that control but eventually it was not Senegal. It was Ghana that actually won that one. You can see the players were fighting ref, right and center. The spot was super hard to take care of, but they managed to lock it up at the end of the day. Yeah, and they got a chicken dinner towards the end. And not only that, they got a decent number of elimination points as well. So they did really, really well. I, I can't wait to see the uh, the total points that have that will be calculated later on because I do sense a gap, but I think that we still six games more to go tomorrow. The gap can still be closed. So even like teams like Morocco, I know like they are pretty comfortable at the top away from that number four. That tomorrow is a new day. Are they comfortable really? Are they? I mean, they didn't get a good win this map. That means that other teams are closing up. Ghana definitely has closed up. Egypt was stunted. Algeria was stunted. So a lot of the Central, Eastern, and Western African teams have actually gotten themselves back in the map just with this game. This game alone might have been a difference maker to not fully reset the progress of the day. Sure, there is a hierarchy, but everything is still up for grabs in day two. Nobody is a clear-cut favorite. Maybe outside of Morocco, which, I mean, that was my decision, Cloud. You, you, know, you know I favored Cloud. Uh, you know I favored Morocco, Cloud, from the early goings. They're the team with experience. They're the team that played together. And they're showing that. But also the rest of the African nations are showing that they are no slouches either when it comes to top-level PUBG Mobile. Well, uh, frankly, if whoever's at number one, even if it's Morocco, right, I, I wouldn't be too worried about 
uh, the number two and number three if you're the team. You'll be more worried about the number four team because at the end of the day, you just want to be in the top three. As long as you're in the top three, whether you're number one or you're number three, you still get the ticket onto Romania. Uh, I guess if we make a comparison, it will be like between number one and number four. And that's where I see the significant enough gap between Morocco and the number four at least. Of course, tomorrow is a new day and teams can still continue to collect points and can still overtake each other. The overall charts could still change by tomorrow. Yeah, definitely. That's something intriguing. And I feel like one of the most important things today that I can take as a takeaway from the entire event is that I really liked Algeria's play, but man, they didn't take their gunfights right today. Like, if, if, if maybe, like, two or three of these big gunfights that they have had had went their way, we might have seen Algeria in the top three. That won't be the case. Algeria didn't have a good day whatsoever when it comes to their shots. Their decision-making is excellent, though. So that much is something that is for a given. That is something that I'm very wary of. When I see Algeria tomorrow, I will not be saying, oh, like, they're not hitting their shots. No, I'll be saying they put themselves in a position. It's just about a matter of time before Algeria is actually back to their winning ways. Yeah, I do. I mean, they started off the day fairly well. It was just like after the third game, words, uh, it was kind of shaky for them. And because of that, they slowly slide down. So they were number three, which was the uh, qualifier slot. But uh, after the last rounds, they slide down. And the last week, saw them, they were at number five. And other teams are starting to catch up. To them. So this is where... Really, you cannot be comfortable. There could be teams that come up with surprise, come and take you out. And if you get eliminated early, well, it's going to be minimum points and you don't want that bracket, especially that we're still in day one. Yeah, definitely. But I feel like day one is a day of a lot of stories. You know, it started off with the first three maps with Morocco, Egypt, and Algeria being the clear favorites in the early run. And the first half of the day just felt like, oh, which one of these three are going to be like in the first, second, and third place. But just looking at things now, things have definitely changed around massively. Morocco with that win, only with that game rather, only got three points in Ghana with the win got 15. A lot of the teams managed to actually eke out some points. So I'm very close to the 10. That's the very respectful scoreline. And you were talking the difference between like the, the, the fourth and the third and the rest of the board. Well, I feel like everybody from Senegal upwards have a very good chance into breaking the top three. Sure, Ghana has 58, but if you have like 33 points or you even have 22 and you have two good games, you're suddenly back into the playing field. Winning teams can get as high as like 17, 20, 20 something points. And if you get one of these games, suddenly you can flip the entire table and make it to the top three. Yeah, it's still very doable for a lot of these teams. And we still got six more rounds tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, and it can still happen. Even if, like, you're Marco, yeah, you're kind of comfortable now. 84 versus the number 14, 39. But imagine if it was, like, a, a disaster for them tomorrow. Then it, the uh, the result might be very for Morocco. But uh, it's very unlikely. I mean, if you're already performing like this in day number, there's only two days of tournament. You should be able to maintain that. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is the scores. So, but it's only day one. So, there's still a lot more to play tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Six clean maps that we will be facing. And well, Cloud, glad to be alongside with you. Glad to be finally seeing some representation from my country. And well, that will be it for us. So, thank you all for watching. I think this is it. I will send it over to the studio. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in for me and Cloud. And tomorrow, we'll have more PUBG. So, until then, stay tuned and good luck in the studio. Welcome back, guys, to the last entry of uh, today. So it seems like uh, still the three teams are standing in the first three standings. So uh, from the third, fourth game, we learned that uh, in the top three is uh, Morocco, Egypt and Ghana. And from the fifth and sixth game, it's still Morocco, Egypt uh, and Ghana. We can uh, just take a look at the fifth game where uh, Morocco finished first, Senegal second and South Africa on the third spot. Uh, and in the sixth game, it was uh, Ghana finishing first, then Ivory Coast finishing second 
second and uh, Martinez on the last and third spot. Uh, this was uh, all from us uh, from today in this uh, six game. We also have a six game tomorrow, so the standings might change a little bit. But uh, in my opinion, I thi still think that Morocco and Egypt will take the first two spots and then uh, we will decide who is going to be the third one uh, tomorrow. But yeah, that's it from uh, our side from today, guys. See you tomorrow at 12 uh, p.m. Thanks for watching and bye.